Hi, I'm Chris Shh. Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Oh. Welcome to our live stream. Shh. We have a busy lineup today with announcements for Path of Exile 2, as well as the exclusive reveal of Path of Exile Macropolis, <laughs> which well. launches on March 29th. For the first time ever, we'll be releasing this expansion simultaneously on all platforms. PC, oh! Twitch drops oh! during today's live stream, so make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your suffering back attachment. Simultaneously? Today's we'll start with Path of Exile 2, where Jonathan will show you our latest announcements. Mark will then take you on a deep dive into the what? new Path of Exile Necropolis Challenge League, which launches in one week. He'll cover the league mechanics, one its week? deep crafting system, large end-game changes, some improvements to the core Path of Exile campaign, Whoa. and finally some Simultaneously? We'll then show you our new supporter packs, and we'll head into a live Q&A session where Ziggy D will ask us your questions from Whoa. Twitch chat. After the live stream, we'll drop the full patch notes. I met that guy Ziggy D, hey Chess. Shh. Time to chat about POE 2 again. Oh, I met this guy. It's only Thank been you. a few months since we talked about the mercenary, and yet even since then, a huge amount has changed. When we announced the mercenary, we he also showed off a lot of the new capabilities that our engine has around animation and character 1080p? control. Moving while shooting was a huge deal in that class, but there were other things going on Sorry, to make feel dude. good too. Well, in recent times, we've only been showing off new character classes, but one thing I've been really excited about is to go back and apply all the new ideas and capabilities that we have to our old classes too. Today, I'd like to show off the Ranger, and I hope that you guys like what you see. I've lived in this forest all my life. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's that a ranger must never miss. She's a, a lesbian. Hunt you. I didn't know. But it is the cruelty of man I fear. <laughs> Thank you. There is no truly escaping the Count's justice. Your sentence is to be hanged from the neck until dead. Let your souls be the first ones, and your bodies be the last. After her! Weird that they're showing this and I'm still not allowed this to talk about it. Has changed me. No more running. Right? No more fear. You won't get away this time. Whoa. I will put an end to this madness. Did you see that charge shot shit? Oh, look at that! Aroa? This be a warning, Gianor. I'm coming for you next. Let the hunt begin. Oh, there's more. I'm not allowed to talk about this game until when 2 o'clock, so I have to just watch. We knew we had to make a class with high agility. The dream of fast bow gameplay is Legolas, so that's what we wanted to deliver. The starting Legolas point is moving build. while shooting a bow. Any kind of basic arrow skill can be fired while moving, with a movement penalty. This immediately gives you a lot more freedom on the battlefield. Yeah. Here, I'm starting each battle with a poison burst arrow to poison groups of enemies. Then using a lightning arrow to arc lightning around larger packs. For even more mobility, we also have a variety of skills that involve vaulting around the battlefield too. Chris doesn't make this, this game. This escape. guy makes this game. Using it jumps backwards and shoots a freezing arrow at the ground. Really useful if monsters close on you and you need to get away. Once you've landed, if monsters were frozen, it'd be nice to have some way to take advantage of that extra time. This is where Snipe comes in. Snipe yeah, is a that. skill shot that you need to charge up and release at exactly the right time. Just frames. If you land the right timing, Snipe is guaranteed to produce a critical strike and does a small AoE as well, so it's a great finisher. 
You can also move while shooting arrow rain skills too. This skill is Lightning Rod. It shoots an arrow into the air that sticks into the ground and does a small AoE. Once the rods are in the ground though, they attract any arcs of lightning that are nearby, causing them to explode again. This means you can stack up a bunch of lightning rods on the ground and bounce lightning between them, doing way more damage. Now this takes care of packs pretty well, but for bigger enemies I'd like to have something that's going to enhance my damage output too. Well, user this well. skill is Stormcaller Arrow. Using it sticks an arrow into an enemy. After a short I wonder if they'll time, nerf lightning arrow or dead eye. Strikes them. This has a high chance to shock them, this and shocked enemies take 30% more damage from all sources. If something big walks along, it's a good idea to throw one of these at them first to enhance your damage before following up with the other combo. I wouldn't mind it. Now if I really want to enhance this combo, there are a couple of things I could do using our this support system. This system is system. so much better skills than the old system. Skills and Path of Exile are granted by items called the skill The new gems. linking system? Each skill gem has colored sockets in it. Way and better. these sockets are for other items called support gems. Support gems modify your skills, and it's where a huge amount of the customization of your character comes from. First I'm going to take this multiple projectile support gem. I could add it to my lightning arrow, and it would fire multiple arrows. This would increase the number of targets I can hit, but that isn't the effect that I'm after. If I add it to my lightning rod skill instead, then when I fire it, I get a nice group of rods. This means that I don't have to spend as much time setting up before I can use it with my lightning arrow combo. <laughs> Other chats getting rowdy. I might also add faster projectiles to make the lightning rods land faster too. Now next up I'm going to grab this chain support gem. Chaining causes many effects to repeat on new targets when you hit them. If I add it to my lightning arrow, it will cause the arcs that come out of lightning arrow to strike even more targets, rippling along my line of lightning rods for huge amounts of damage. Wish I could talk about this. You gotta, I gotta wait. I don't want to get in trouble. They said now if you we can do support <laughs> talk about it early, we'll hate you. As well. Let's start simple. I'm going to chuck less duration on here. This will cause the lightning from the sky to strike a bit faster. Next up, we have a support called Shock Proliferation. This support makes it so that any enemies shocked by the skill will also have the shock jump to nearby enemies, meaning they'll take the extra damage as well. It's just a chance to proc, so it's not going to proc on every single pack. But when it does, a pack will go down ultra quick. Another useful empowering skill is Barrage. Barrage is one of the rare cooldown skills in POE 2. It enhances whatever your next attack is to fire three times. With what we have here, I think it might be a good idea to use it with Lightning Arrow. It'll generate three times as many lightning explosions. Diablo 4 killer, you dude. You could also use it at just the right moment with Snipe, <laughs> or any number of other skills depending on what effect you need more of right now. It's very it versatile, up. and can be used in a range of situations. Now, even as mobile as the Ranger is, it's still very useful to slow monsters down, and a Ranger certainly has quite a few tools to do this. If you're prepared to get up close and personal, we have a skill called Electrocuting Rod. First, jump over the enemy and shoot it into them. Once the rod's in place, any lightning wow. damage they take will build up a special electrocute gauge. Once the gauge is full, the monster is totally suppressed, allowing you to kill the I didn't easily. try this guy. Now sometimes when you use electrocuting rod, the enemy dies before you get a chance to electrocute them. Because I'm not a bitch. I think there's another support gem I could add to my lightning arrow to fix this problem. Neural overload will make it easier to electrocute enemies. If the skill it's attached to puts them over 50% of their electrocute bar, it will trigger instantly. Oh, he almost died. This guy's struggling. Now this skill works really well for suppressing a single large enemy, but I'd like to improve my crowd control ability for groups as well. I'm going to add a support gem called Frozen Nexus to my Frost Escape. This makes an area of chilled ground around frozen enemies. I'll also add Deep Freeze to it as well, which will make the freezes last a bit longer. Cool. Now when I use my frost escape on that front enemy, others nearby are slowed down. The potion icon It would also be good if I had a way to slow enemies They're different down based on what kind of potions. Well. So this Those would be are... a great time to start getting into the ranger's poison What are you saying? Are you saying you don't like the way they look? Because that's with, based on what kind of arrow. potion you're wearing. This skill fires an arrow into the air that creates a small plant where it lands. 
the plant sends out tendrils to nearby enemies, it slowing them like down and poisoning them. Graphics. I think but it's it probably just because you're too. watching it on the stream. The plant gets further poisoned. It transfers that poison to the This game looks really it. cool. Normally, you would only be able to get one stack of poison like on the Like it's one of those nice looking games. You can put as much poison as you want on this plant. You could just use the plant to slow monsters down and not worry about the poison part. But if you want to go all in on poison, this is the way to do it. Now, if you do want to focus on poisons more, another useful skill is poison bloom arrow. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this the potion, potions potions look good either, but I ground. think those are early if potions. You wait a little while, they'll explode. Like those aren't the ones you're gonna use in the end just game. Like any Maybe the one, game, these plants the well blue one on the left. Shoot the poison burst arrow at enemies nearby and watch your plants grow more and more powerful. Poisoning the pustules causes them to do much more damage and makes them explode much faster as well. I can also add the pierce support to poison burst arrow. Doing this will mean I get multiple poison bursts as it goes through It's each kind of interesting that they're focusing so much on these types of details. It's almost like... Like... People aren't going to be able to play this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It seems like they're also have another skill to being really nice specific. For plants to grow. Gas cloud arrow. This skill shoots the ground and creates a cloud of gas that continuously poisons things inside it. Throw your plants down, then put a gas cloud on top. The constant poisoning will make them grow. Huh. That's pretty cool. Grow your plants. Another poison-related skill we have on the Ranger is called Plague Bearer. This is a reservation skill, meaning it uses spirit. Huh. When I enable it, I get this counter that counts up whenever I apply poison to a monster. You can see the counter on the skill increasing as each new monster is poisoned. Now I'm going to fight these monsters and make sure to poison them as much as I can to build up the counter. Is it unchanged? So far it is. I feel like the twist is about to be unveiled. It does take quite a while to get the counter up to 100%, but it's worth it. Whenever I choose, I can unleash the poison in a big explosion around my character, An dealing explosion. a large amount of damage. Did he? I didn't even notice it. That was weird. Now next up, we have a classic. <laughs> rain of arrows. It's simple. Shoot a bunch of arrows in the sky, and they rain down for a short time. It's decent AoE and damage at long range. Thanks, Thank please, Sean. Now, this skill doesn't last too long, but we can change that. It's time to introduce Thanks, Frenzy Franklin Charges. Thanks, Franklin and Seru and x -Dun. Frenzy Charges are used for a variety of skills on the Ranger, but with Rain of Arrows, they can be used to extend the duration. How do we get some, though? Here we have a skill called Sniper's Mark. Put it on an enemy, and it will grant you a Frenzy Charge <laughs> when you crit them. Man, now, maybe they should early. have separate events for POE 1 and 2. So first the other chat's them pissed. Enemy, then we sniped them. And after that, the next rain of arrows will last a really, really long time. We still have some weaknesses, though. While rain of arrows hits enemies with a ton of arrows, each one doesn't do much damage individually. They're getting rowdy. It would be nice if we had a way to break the armor on enemies so that rain of arrows dealt more damage. Thankfully, we have this Corrode Armor support gem, and we can put it on our Gas Cloud Arrow. Corrode Armor causes poison to erode the armor on targets until it's all gone. Hmm. This will significantly increase the damage that Rain of Arrows does against armored targets. Oh yeah, and one more thing about Gas Clouds. They can be detonated with explosions. I have an explosive arrow here. Let's check it out. That's pretty cool. Now, because monsters and gas clouds are likely to have their armor broken, I think there's another useful combo we can do. Man, too bad this I can't talk about it. Support. I got this to play this and I have stuff I want to say. That have their armor broken. But I don't want to break any rules. Perfect for what we have going on here. So, those are just some of the skills we have on the Ranger class in Path of Exile 2. Now that we've seen all these skills, Let's see how well they do against a much tougher enemy. It's time to fight the boss of the temples, Thanos. Barkin. Just quit my job. Here's your cut. Hey, congrats. 
Uh, thanks, Mr. Lamb. Hope your next one is cool. Man, I can't wait to tell you my opinion about this game. pretty cool except for the bow user I didn't try the ranger but I talked to everyone and different people tried the different ones can't talk about my experience yet. There's an embargo. I'm not allowed to talk about my experience until 2 p.m. So in about 45 minutes. But whenever it's uh, over. Yeah, Zizarin was there. Everyone was there. Like a bunch of people were there from YouTube. A bunch of YouTubers. Did they let you play with a controller? Don't ask me dumb questions, bitch. I just told you I can't tell you about my experience, shithead. Fuck you. What do you think? I fucking used a mouse and keyboard? Use your brain, dude. Fuck no. I would have left instantly. <laughs> this looks hard as fuck. <laughs> Boss talks a lot of shit. <laughs> That's the ranger. But yeah. oh yeah, there was one more thing. The mount. Check the this mount. Out. Yes, you can ride a rower. While riding the rower, you can shoot arrows with no movement. You can hand. attack. It's pretty overpowered. You can also use your vaulting skills to jump right off the rower's back. Once the rower doesn't have a rider, it starts attacking monsters. So he's nice to have around, even if you're not riding him. That's he's it. like a minion. Riding, don't get hit. If you take a heavy stun while on a rower, you'll fall off, and it takes a while to get up. So be careful. So that's what we wanted to show you today. Now there is just one more rather unfortunate bit of news. Path of Exile 2's beta is going to be delayed. We previously said that we would get the beta out on June 7th. And while I think we would be able to get the game's content ready in time, we underestimated how long it would take to get gameplay polished to a standard that we're happy with. We're still going to be doing alpha testing in June, but we're going to be delaying the beta until later in the year. I don't have an exact date for you today, but it should be towards the end of the year. In the meantime, you can still play Path of Exile 1, of course. Now, want, speaking want. of POE 1, we also have the 324 expansion to announce. I'm going to hand over to Mark, the game director on POE 1, to show us what's in store. Huh? We had a lot of fun making this one, so let's just get straight into it with the trailer for Path of Exile Necropolis. Where's Chris? Shh. This is it. Cold flesh, dirt, maggots, and ghosts. Our job is to keep them where they belong. It's your first night, so you'll need this. A ghostly lantern from Ghastly Tinker. Hmm? Whoa. Are those bosses? You learn to peer into the souls of the Oh. Dead. It's like you Sanctum, huh? Twist them. Thank them too. Meet me in the necropolis. You can pilfer shiny things from a corpse. I can't believe the league's gonna start at the same time as PC. That's unbelievable. Glorious things from a soul. I need a grave digger. 
So we're gonna be grave diggers? We're gonna be robbing dead people. And their ghosts are probably gonna be pissed. Scarab Overhaul? More Transfigured Gems? Whoa. The job's hard, but the pay's good. What good do pay. you say? Good pay. In the Necropolis League, you will encounter Undertaker Aramor, a man collecting the scattered spirits of the Eternal Empire for a I like his hair. purpose. Come here, what are you doing, my friend? Shut up. Don't tell me I'm right. their ancient Thanks fury for streaming. And sorrow onto Thanks, the world. Aerith. The Undertaker will provide you with the Lantern of Aramor, a powerful family heirloom which can illuminate the wrathful spirits haunting monsters throughout Rayclast. With it, the Undertaker hopes to employ you to rid Rayclast of this menace and further his cryptic cause. The Lantern can be used when entering any new area. When peering through it, you can examine the spirits haunting that area. Huh. The Lantern also allows you to manipulate them, letting you configure which monsters are affected by which mods. Weird. It would be wise to take your time with your decisions here, for the spirits are not forgiven. Booba! When peering through the lantern, you can also see extra details about the packs of monsters in the area. Rowers here are considered common, whereas the water elementals are more scarce. If you want things to be easier, you can put the more difficult spirits on the elementals, which you'll encounter less often. Huh. Okay. We've tried to make sure that by engaging with the lantern, you are able to intelligently control the difficulty in the Necropolis League. The spirits come in a number of forms which represent the okay. danger they pose. For example here, the infested vultures are servant haunted, causing them to deal a small amount of increased damage. But the vols vanguard are noble haunted, causing them to deal a large amount of increased damage. As you reach higher level areas in race class, the tear and number of spirits that are haunting monsters will generally increase. Your game knowledge can help you here. If you're aware of the composition of a monster pack, this means certain mods will be easier to manage. For example, the mod that increases a pack's damage for every monster killed has no effect on packs with a single monster, like a Devourer. However, if we found a spirit that makes the strongest monster in a pack deal 100% more damage, well, I'm going to avoid the Devourer. Whoa. Okay. You might have noticed that the Lantern of Aramor provides other useful information, such as the types of abilities monsters use, mm. or the damage types they deal. So for those who are less familiar with how Weird. these monsters work, this can be a great way to Who learn cares what, you what monsters against. you're fighting against. The spirits are constantly moving throughout It's Rayclass. PoE. So if you are finding a campaign area too difficult, you can just wait a few minutes and peer through the lantern again to see what's oh. changed. Get owned. Of course, powerful spirits beget powerful rewards. There are two reasons why you might want to face a challenge now and then. I'm listening. Firstly, not all the spirits are malicious. Sometimes the monsters aren't haunted at all, but are instead devoted. These can grant basic rewards like increased experience, or bigger rewards like spawning the Nameless Seer, an NPC that will grant you a single unique item Whoa. after you defeat all of the packs affected by that spirit. Whoa! The more haunted monsters you defeat in the previous area before cool. using the lantern, the more likely the devoted monsters will appear in the next area. Monsters haunted by higher tier spirits will increase the chance of the devoted appearing even more. Okay. Meaning that sometimes it's worth putting the hardest modifier possible on very common monsters. All right. If then. you're brave enough. Again, we've tried hard here to allow players to customize the danger and rewards as much as they can. Aramor is an undertaker, and you can probably guess what we're taking to him. The second main reward from the Necropolis League <laughs> is monsters Thank with you. unresolved anguish. Once slain, their corpses need extra care from the Undertaker, and he will offer to take them back to his necropolis and store them in the morgue. Time to earn your keep. When you are ready, you can visit the morgue to view the monsters you have collected, and then get to work burying them in one of many graves in Aramor Cemetery. For example, we will bury this Katava's Herald. Aramor's mysterious soul experiments can coalesce powerful items. 
Here, I've chosen to create a pair of boots. What? Target farming? Target farming? These boots are useful for my character, but aren't exactly what I hoped for. And this is where the Necropolis crafting system really shines. Oh boy. You'll have noticed that the corpse we collected earlier had a crafting effect on it. In fact, all collected corpses do. If you bury multiple corpses in the cemetery, all adjacent corpses can be exercised at once to create one item. Weird. All of the crafting effects on those corpses will apply to that same item. This allows you to have either one or many different crafting projects ongoing in the cemetery. What the hell? For example, next time I try to create boots, I could bury corpses that increase the chance of getting move speed modifiers. To go further, I could use these to generate higher tier modifiers. Oh boy. Then I could try to buy someone make a video on how to do this, right? This. Finally, I'll apply some crafting effects that improve the probability of getting good rolls. This looks complicated. Now, let's craft our item and see what we get. It sucks. This guy talks a lot of shit. As you can see now, we have a much better pair of boots, forged from the souls of our enemies. Those are pretty cool boots. You could even use the entire cemetery to craft one item. What? There is always something you can do to try and ensure your item will be as best as it can be. We hope to see some really crazy grave crafts. Grave crafting. If you are lucky, you might find corpses with meta crafting modifiers. What? These can be buried to manipulate your crafting projects in more drastic ways. Suffixes this can one be changed. increases the potency of all crafting effects of adjacent undead corpses. Another meta crafting modifier gives a chance to drop an extra item from your craft, with all the same crafting outcomes Whoa. applied. All you have to do is bury a lot of undead monsters. Weird. Yeah. Excuse me. SSF League? I wonder if this can give you uniques. You can also craft new unique items exclusive to the Necropolis League using okay. this system. As you explore Rayclast, you might find the corpses of famous Eternal Empire families. And when you bury an entire family together and exorcise them, they will thank you with a unique specific to their lineage. Their lineage, huh? This guy talks all that shit every time you create an item? It takes so long! For example, the Navalius Inheritance Belt. I'll give you a moment to check that out. Reduced effect. I you can use other corpses alongside them to grant implicit mods, manipulate the values of explicit mods, and more. In this case, with the Parandus Pact, you can even change the modifiers it generates. This unique is a jewel which adds extra stats to passive skills in a radius when socketed into the passive skill tree. The stats it adds are randomly generated, but you can bias it towards a specific type huh. by using other crafting effects, such as this one which increases the chance of getting life modifiers. Let's see what we get. This looks so fucking complicated, dude. This looks so fucking complicated. Damn. We didn't get it this time. I guess we're gonna have to go Global and collect crit more chance. Of course, you can trade the corpses away to other players. All you need to do is purchase empty coffins from The Undertaker, and use them on your corpses in the morgue. You can trade them. corpses? Oh no. Another item in the Necropolis League that you can find are Embers of the All Flame. These are monster spirits that remain living in the All Flame, a powerful ancient artifact of Rayclast. And you can set them free by placing them in the Lantern of Aramor and defeating them. These embers drop throughout Rayclast as itemized packs of monsters. You are able to use these packs to replace the packs in areas. For example, we what? have found this all flame ember of Tarfor. We can now go to enter the next area and replace one of the monster packs in here. You can see we have also gotten one of the devoted modifiers to appear. We can pair up the Karui ancestors with this modifier, making them even more rewarding. Let's go ahead and replace the tentacle miscreations. However, when replacing packs, so you want to double check their density as the new pack will inherit the density of the replaced pack. 
The Karui ancestors we have now added to our area can even drop basic variations of tattoos. <laughs> what? You Thank aware, you. This is an item type from the Say Trial word? of the League, which can be used on passive skills to change what they do. Tattoos. There are many different types of itemized packs. You can find Breach and Legion monsters that drop splinters, untainted packs that provide insane amounts of experience, Ooh. and even simple frogs, which can be used to replace difficult monsters to make life easier. Simple frogs. And of course, these ember monsters can be raised as specters too. Huh. Finally, let's discuss how this league works in in-game maps. Each in-game map will allow you to manipulate it using the lantern Ooh. or the map device UI. However, instead of randomly cycling every few minutes, it is fixed to that map. Once you view the map through the lantern, you cannot remove it from the map device. So you can't trade that map away now that you've seen it is too difficult for huh. you, Or has monsters in it that you'd rather avoid. That's pretty like interesting. Like porcupines. We're also trying something new this time around. Something new? During the Necropolis League, there will be support for the League on the Atlas Passive Tree. Multiple clusters will be there, allowing what? you to enhance the gameplay, customize it, and even change its behavior in meaningful ways. One way that you can change the crafting in a meaningful way is with the Prospero's Wager Keystone. With this keystone, all the monsters with unresolved anguish come with this crafting modifier, which causes them to generate a random craft when buried. This means instead of pre-planning your crafts, you have to adapt to them on the fly to get the best results. These clusters will not be available in Standard League. Huh. In 3.24, we've made a plethora of changes to the endgame. We've introducing new bosses, adding another tier of maps, new bosses? and streamlining the Atlas. Another tier of maps? The most and most rewarding content in Path of Exile can be found in uber pinnacle bosses, such as the Maven and Whoa. the Searing Exarch. Currently, the only way to access these bosses is by allocating specific keystones on the Atlas Passive Tree. Shh. While this system offers a nice element of control, it causes a problem. Rewards and access to the non-Uber variants are now economically priced around the rewards of the Uber fights. This Go means on. it is wasteful to run the non-Uber variants instead of simply selling them. Another problem that we noticed is the difficulty jump between the Pinnacle and Uber Pinnacle content was relatively large. There's gonna be more there? there wasn't obvious content that could bridge this gap. Many players would give up on their characters before being able to defeat the Uber Pinnacle bosses. In 324, we will be making some changes to this. We are removing the keystones that give access to the Uber Pinnacle bosses from the Atlas Tree, and instead we'll be adding a new set of fragments that give you access to this content. Uh oh. Where do you get these fragments? We are adding a new tier of maps, tier 17 maps, which not only give you access to the Uber Pinnacle content, but also test your characters in new ways. They feature a new set of bosses, Uber monsters, Whoa. and a new tier of modifiers that can roll on the maps. There are five new tier 17 Whoa. maps in total, with some surprising boss fights at the end. We'll look at a couple today, and the rest you'll have to That's discover crazy. for yourself. That's crazy. They haven't added maps since I started First, playing. we have the Citadel map. This map contains the an ancient Kalgurian yeah, Citadel. You. you will encounter many expedition monsters as the signature packs throughout the map. At the end, you will fight Uber Uhtred. Whoa! This is a version of a boss from Expedition League. That's the Expedition with all guy. abilities and mechanics enhanced. Uber Uhtred will even be able to summon two other expedition bosses to aid it during what? the fight. What? Secondly, we have the Fortress map. This map is an impregnable fortress, guarded by monsters from the Heist League. At Heist the end, boss! You will encounter an uber version of The Unbreakable. Again, it has enhanced abilities and mechanics Are you have to learn serious? and overcome. Uber! Each of the tier 17 map bosses has a chance to drop a unique item, allowing for some target farming. However, these aren't entirely new unique items. Instead, we've taken other unique items, removing them from the core drop pool, oh. and rebalancing them to fit here. Oh. One example is this reworked version of Wraith Lord. It has four what? abyss sockets, and allows you to summon an additional spectre for each ghastly eye jewel socket. What? In Another example is Mana Storm. This has been rebalanced to grant a lot more damage than before, alongside some more impactful mana stats. If you can get lucky rolls. Oh, damn. 
Alongside adding tier 17 maps, we have also changed the uber pinnacle bosses to have completely distinct unique item drop pools from their non-uber counterparts. Whoa! This means there is a reason to farm both versions. Are you serious? Let's take a look at the shaper versus the uber shaper. The shaper will drop these uniques. Voidwalker, Shaper's Touch, Solstice Vigil, and Dying Sun. Whereas the Uber Shaper will drop these. Echoes of Creation, Sublime Vision, That's cool. Entropic Devastation, Starforge, and a new unique belt called the Tides of Time. Unique belt? Another example of a unique new unique belt? is this helmet from the Uber Eater of Worlds, Ravenous Passion, and these gloves from the Uber Searing Exarch. The Celestial Brace. Each of the Uber Pinnacle bosses has Her a new unique added to their drop pools. Wow. We have identified another major problem with the endgame we'd like to address. With every expansion added to the game, we have been increasing the complexity of running maps. It's at the point now where a player must repeatedly execute a large sequence of steps to run maps efficiently. It can be easy to forget critical steps. Yes. And it can be tiring to repeat them. Go on. To solve this, we are removing some systems, but are keeping what is good about them. The two main systems we've removed are Sextants Woo! and the Master Mission Selector. It is not our intention to dull the content, however. We have completely reworked Scarabs to include most of the options that were previously covered by those mechanics, and many, many more. <laughs> Let's take a Thank look at you. some of them. Commonly, you might find Scarabs that simply grant access to different content. Here, we have a Scarab that causes Beyond Demons to spawn when killing monsters in your maps. And here, we have one that adds a Delirium Mirror. Whoa. Each type of Scarab now has Holy multiple versions. So if you want to fully invest in a type of content, you can do so. Here's a suite of Ultimatum Scarabs. This Ultimatum Scarab adds an Ultimatum encounter Whoa. to a map. This Ultimatum Scarab of Bribing then causes that Ultimatum encounter to grant better rewards and its monsters to yield more experience. This ultimatum scarab of dueling will cause that ultimatum encounter to always guarantee the trial master boss fight at the end. Oh. Assuming you can survive through all the rounds. This ultimatum scarab of catalyzing will cause all rewards from that ultimatum to be catalysts instead of other rewards. Wow! And finally, this ultimatum wow. scarab of inscription will cause all catalyst rewards from that ultimatum to be inscribed ultimatums instead. Okay. There are plenty of others. If you enjoy divination card farming, you might want to use these. This divination scarab of curation causes more divination cards to drop for each different favored map you have selected. Wow. But it also causes whatever map you're running to only drop divination cards from those favored maps. Weird. So if you want to try and aim for your mage blood and don't want to just farm Crimson Temple, wow. then this scarab is for you. These guys are smart this bitches, dude. This divination scarab of completion causes your divination smart cards bitches. to have a 20% chance to drop as a full stack instead. Oh. Maximum dopamine. Maximum dopamine. There are now just a lot of scarabs. You might have also noticed that they no longer have tears. Scarabs are now all world drops. You can get them anywhere. Some might be rarer than others, but the intention is that there'll be a lot more options than before and more interesting combinations to consider. Weird. If you want to target specific scarabs, Betrayal has been updated to include most of them, and you will need to relearn which ones come from where. Huh. While this system is allowing you to heavily invest in one type of content, it is reducing your capacity for variety. To address this, we have massively increased access to content on the Atlas Passive Tree. You Look are now able to reliably tree. get different leagues like Breach or Legion from just your Atlas Passive. Look at that tree. Regarding Master Missions, content such as Incursion, Delve, Betrayal, and Bestiary, these two are now accessible with Scarabs and have more reliable investment options on the tree. Not only this, you can now get Jun, Einha, Alva, and Nico yeah. to appear together in the same Excuse map. Me. We have also removed some keystones such as Wandering Path, what? Grand Design, and Growing Hordes. Wow! But I've added some new ones too. For example, Unwavering Vision, Back to Basics. I can't read that fast and thorough exploration. No one can. And we have added some new notables such as Remarkable Relics, which allows you to try find better variants of Scarabs. Cool. Mounting modifiers. 
which increases the values of modifiers on your maps by 2% for each explicit modifier. And Tainted Carapaces, which is just one in a set of many that allow you to target farm specific types of scarabs. These are just a few of the many new notables that can be found on the Atlas Passive skill tree. Target farming specific Lastly, types of scarabs. Lastly, we are giving you more flexibility in what content you want to run in the endgame. In 324, you can now have multiple copies of the Atlas tree. Huh? Which can be swapped between maps at your <laughs> Oh! Unlock up to two extra trees for a <laughs> total of three. By the <laughs> Are you fucking kidding? Content. Three trees? Map, you can select which tree you would like to use. Oh. For a given league, you'll never feel constrained to playing your end game a single way. You can also label your trees to easily identify which one has which content. With all this combined, <laughs> we're hoping to see new end game strategies shine through. While playing through the campaign Did you in 24, you'll notice a myriad of small improvements and surprises. The fundamentals of the campaign are still intact, but we've scattered fun encounters and secrets throughout Rayclass. Secrets? The Dweller of the Deep has been trapped. Oh, fuck. What are these ritual shrines doing in the Northern Forest? Suspicious. Why are they giving me omens? Huh? This device looks safe. I should definitely use this on my items. What? There are plenty more encounters to discover. What? We'll continue adding more surprises. They're making the campaign games. fun by Even random now. shit happening. In the previous you guys are smart bitches. We released a large number of transfigured skill gems. These are alternate versions of existing skill gems that function in very different ways, allowing for more build and gameplay variety. At the time, our aspirations were higher than we could achieve. We planned more gems than we could make. So, in 324, we're adding another set of transfigured gems that we have now finished. Eye shot, Whoa. incinerate, artillery ballista, tornado, elemental hit, kinetic blast, poisonous concoction, huh. and lastly, summon holy relic. Cool. Hopefully those of you who missed your favorite skill having a transfigured variant will get that here. We will certainly be adding more of these in the future, especially for skills that are missing them still. Of course, we'll also be doing a balance pass on the existing transfigured gems. One of the main ones we're looking at is Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation. As a result of this change, it is clear that the endgame potential of the Wanda archetype really starts to suffer, mostly in the single target damage department. Due to this, we've added the new support gem, Sacred Wisps. This support gem causes supported skills to create two attached wisps for a duration. With Whoa. these wisps, whenever you attack, they have a chance to also use the same skill. A chance? If you have enemies in your presence. And if there are any rare or unique enemies, they will always use the skill. Yeah, that's more like it. That leads us into all the other quality of life features we're introducing in 324. And there's a shitload of them. Shitload. Many of these have been revealed in teasers already. But here's a quick summary. We've added the automation and call to arms skill gems for being able to trigger instant skills and war cries without having to bind them to left click. Mm -hmm. You can now hold down control and left click to automatically apply certain currency orbs until they achieve the desired That's pretty result slow, don't you think? You for example, push X you can hold down fusings until you reach maximum links. You will be able to control, shift, click currency into a trade cool. window to automatically move all of that currency at once from your inventory. <laughs> That's Thank cool. You. Detonate Dead now has clearer telegraphing effects. When harvest crafting, the That's item cool hover will always be visible, so you no longer have to mouse back and forth to see the results That's of really your crafts. That's really cool. When you use a VAL orb on a map, the map no longer has a chance this... to become unidentified. I don't know if that's cool. Instead, it adds a new implicit. We've created a set of implicits that affect the areas in fun ways. Fun. Related to that, corrupted and mirrored items can now be identified. Huh? Breach hands now open upon approach, and no longer need to be clicked. Upgrades to Pantheon powers now apply to all characters in a league. You no longer need to grind divine oh, that's vessels on tight. each new character. With I love that. Crafting, you can now re-roll Uber Elder Fragment. Oh my god, by dude. The shaper cannot be re-rolled into fragments dropped by the Elder, and vice versa. <laughs> Regarding Betrayal, we're removing Ashling's crafting bench as a oh. Instead, Veiled Orbs now perform that function. 
They remove a mod and replace it with a veiled mod. Ashling's gone. These orbs now drop from Katarina and are no longer a world drop. Flasks can now be corrupted by Val orbs, giving random That's minus weird. ten to plus ten quality. The minus ten extra quality to weapons, armors, and flasks has been removed from Betrayal. The Betrayal benchcraft that converts an amulet to a talisman has been moved to Bestiary. I never used and thus this once. Can be traded. Maven invitations no longer drop. Instead, when you have this completed witnessing good. all bosses required to go to the Man, they made arena, the game way better. You can just talk to Karak, and he'll open a map device window with the invitation already in there. This is how it should have always be been. Valdo's maps that granted invitations now give scarabs. No more having to waste guardian kills to try get invitations to drop. Next up, we're going to be talking about our new League supporter packs. Today, we're launching two <laughs> new series of supporter Thank packs. You. The Solar and Eldritch packs. So much to think about. Each tier contains the full pack's face value and points, I think they made the game a hundred times better. Exclusive microtransactions. Mind blowing. These packs are only available for the duration of the Necropolis League and will leave the store forever when it ends. As always, the microtransactions in these packs are purely cosmetic and do not affect your character's power they or They released the patch notes way. today, right? The Solar series of supporter packs contains six exclusive microtransactions. The Cosmos Weapon Effect adorns your weapon with stars. Hitting enemies causes cosmic energy to spill out into the area around them. The Radiant Orb of Chance Extra Effect huh? projects the outcome of items you've used an Orb of Chance on above your head. Weird. Remember to congratulate other exiles in town if you see them chance a powerful unique item. Weird. Shine boldly with the Solar Knight Armor Set. The power of the sun radiates from your body getting more and more intense as you use skills and emitting solar flares as you run. With the supernova level up extra effect, the dead will be raised from the ground around you before being obliterated and turned to ash by a level up effect whenever you level up. <laughs> All right. This one is my personal Whoa. Favorite. Is that the a Cosmic turtle? Turtle hideout lets you travel the infinite expanse Whoa. of the cosmos atop the back of a colossal turtle. Carry the weight of That's the sun on cool. your back with the Solar Guardian back attachment. Witness it grow larger and larger as the energy of slain enemies is funneled into it. When it reaches its maximum size, it goes supernova and turns into a black hole, forever drifting throughout Rayclast. What? The Eldritch Pack series also has six exclusive microtransactions. Are you wondering if we moved the stash in the latest patch? Don't be fooled, because with the Mimic Stash Pet, players can transform into an image of a stash when in a town or hideout, and scare unsuspecting exiles. This pet so follows stupid. behind you in its terrifying hand-walking That's gonna cost me like 500 bucks if the I want it, right? The slam finisher effect sends How much is it? enemies into a final abyss of unending darkness. The Eldritch Hunger Armor Set contains a beast that demands oh, you to feed cool. it by embracing your bloodlust. Watch it grow in power the more you kill until it bursts from the shell of the helmet. Are you Whoa! Las Plagas? Gloria Las Plagas? The seed within the corrupted growth map device expands its grasp on your hideout the more maps you complete on your atlas. Whoa. Equipping the headhunter character effect causes skulls of slain rare enemies to whirl around you like trophies. They sure. become enraged when you are near a rare enemy you are yet to kill, wishing for them to join your collection. Cool. Witness a reality where the struggle didn't exist, allowing the Eldritch Horrors to settle their own conflicts with the Eldritch Horror Apparition effect. Which of the Eater of Worlds or Searing Exarch do you think will win? These packs are now available for purchase on both PC and console, and will remain so during Path of Exile Necropolis. That mimic Meanwhile, pet is Meanwhile, the Shade cool. and Disciple packs leave the store forever at the launch of Necropolis League, so now's your last chance to purchase them. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. We're just about to start the Q&A well, yeah, with ZD. Afterwards, we'll post Path of Exile Necropolis's full patch notes. Patch notes. With release at the end of next week, our community team will be posting crucial information you'll need for Necropolis's release. Keep an eye on the news. 
On release weekend, we expect to launch the new mystery box and this season's Kerax Vault That's Pass. That's incredible news, Thank dude. you for joining us today and checking out our This was probably one of the We're better reveals awesome grave ever and conquering that I've experienced so far. Next week. The amount we'll of good the stuff shortly, is really so like a big ready. amount. They got rid of Sextons! Oh my god, that's fucking amazing. And you can swap Uber Elder fragments. Oh my god, I'm nutting right now. They got rid of Sextons, dude. Sextons fucking suck. Oh man. And they added new maps. This is the first time they've added new maps since I started playing. 3x Atlas Trees. What the fuck? Oh! <laughs> Three... Three Atlas passive trees. That is so. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Good morning, Exiles, and welcome to our Q and A portion for today. I'm joined by Jonathan and Where's Mike. Chris? And first thing, we're going to be talking about Path of Exile One questions. I know that's the content that you'll be getting your hands on soon, and want to hear all about. And then afterwards, we'll follow up with a bit of a deep dive into Path of Exile 2 reveals, both from today and also some of the other stuff that came up during the recent hands-on event. But uh, good morning, Jonathan and Mark. How are you going? Hey, really nice to be here again. Yeah, good morning. <clears throat> Thanks for having us. <laughs> Always a pleasure. I love talking to you folks about Path of Exile, right? <laughs> yeah. So let's Thank kick you. things off with Thanks the for the subs and whatnot. Necropolis. And I just want to ask, should I ask about Lycia and Katarina? and what it means for them to be involved, especially since they like characters that are actively present elsewhere in the game in another mechanic right now. Like, what does that mean? Um, uh, we, we bent the rules a little bit on that teaser. They're not actually involved. <laughs> um, they're o only in the sense that they are both uh, T17 map bosses. So you don't actually fight them together, <laughs> but uh, we thought it would make a cool, uh, you know, a little teaser shot there. And I, I think it did, it raised a lot of questions, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, okay. I was like, we're still doing some timey wimey stuff. Oh, they both kind of like deal with death, so there's a bit of a connection well, there. Like when you get into maps, everything's all memories, and the line gets a bit blurred. You can kind of do whatever you want, which is a a good thing about that system. <laughs> you don't have to stay so grounded and sensible. But um, so yeah, we do have some interesting encounters going on there that are a bit different. Um, but you know, it's again, the, the grass hair. Are you to, talking uh, about Ziggy D <laughs> kind of detached from the, the groundedness of the world and the rules of what's actually happening in there, happening in there. His hair looks like grass. It looks like there's a lot of boss stuff coming this league. Uh, is that all focused in the new T17 map or is there some sort of league mechanic itself? You well? got lucky bitch. Uh, no, we focused the monster Shh. development this time around on the T17s instead of the league. Um, so there's no new bosses in the league but there are there are some reuse of monsters uh through like the all flame embers and whatnot but not bosses uh and then yeah we put all our monster de our boss development towards creating these t17 bosses as well as the monsters like there are quite a lot of actual interesting monsters in the t17 maps t17 as well 17 um maps. like i don't know if people saw but there's you can get brutus as just a monster like he's not a boss. He's wow. just there are packs of Brutuses and <laughs> what? You know, various other, <laughs> various other I monsters throughout the like the the non notable ones, which um will be quite interesting to huh. see. You'll probably find a rare hasted Brutus is a whole different wow to even the <laughs> Brutus map rare Brutus. <laughs> Yes, we experienced that last league in Affliction at launch for those of us there who empowered that boss. Oh yeah, you could power <laughs> it. an experience to be sure. So uh, we'll we'll kind of change my order of the day then with the tier 17 maps. So there's four of these, was there? Five. Uh, we've got five of them. Five. Um, yeah, we've got the Ziggurat map, Sanctuary map, Fortress map, Abomination map, and Citadel map being the five. And these are like effectively Uber maps, but we kind of also had Uber maps last league in a different way with the community made maps as well. But this is a whole different system, right? Uh yeah, this is uh this is different. Um obviously the the Valdos maps come with a lot a little bit more craziness going on. There are custom mod pools on these. Um mm. and there is a little bit of overlap, but nowhere near as crazy. Like you don't you're not gonna roll the like mod that sends you to the void league or anything like that. <laughs> um that's exclusive for those player made ones um but yes this is uh, a new tier of difficulty um it is expected that they are hard for sure yeah. but i'm sure some of your questions get into some of that so yeah you know, sure explain them as it comes <laughs> so um 
this is these are the primary vehicle now for getting like the uber fight keys what led to the decision to make <laughs> them you. come from a tier 17 that's separate crazy map, thing like this instead of uber fight off, keys. i guess was the more expected like you would get an uber maven key from well maven. like okay like let's say you uh let's say it was from shaper mm -hmm. and to get uber shaper and you you kill mm -hmm. your shaper let's say it was even once every time and now you kill your uber shaper and or let's say you fail that's fine but eventually you conquer it you can kill it it's not now fun to go back and do regular shaper where clearly you can do the uber version why are you bothering with the non-uber version so unless you want a specific drop from him um it's it's not fun to go back and just do like a clearly uh -huh. lower grade quality so we, we instead went with it going a different way where we have something that is ideally in between those two points of difficulty and has random variants. Like, you'll find that some of the tier 17 map bosses with certain mod combinations are probably even harder than the Uber Pinnacles. Wow. Um, depending on your character and all of those variables there. Um, I wouldn't say that's going to happen entirely consistency, uh, consistently. Like, it, it'll be occasionally the case. But um, it certainly isn't fun to just be like, it's in order really to do good. Uber Shaper, I have to do this content that I have clearly proven capable of doing. And just This is an amazing update. I see, yeah. So it's for the people who want to farm their own ones. It reminds me of the Atlas rework. Up to their challenge level, basically. Where they the took away the uh, yes, Void yeah. Stones, or the How other the stones. Maps, though? Uh, so the tier it reminds me maps, of that. Uh, when you get more void stones, it has a chance to convert T16 maps that drop. Um, mm -hmm. The more void stones you get, it becomes multiplicatively higher. Um, but there is a kind of diminishing returns on that. Um, so it is quite probable to convert T16 maps like the first one. And then as you get more T17s, it becomes less and less and less. Are these guys talking about the, the left mouse button? The LMB is left mouse button? T16s get on, top fucking mouse users. End up with that's what I was telling them when I was there. I was like, you guys are fucking dinosaurs, dude. Pad is the future. And we didn't want it to be that uh, we have to balance around the juicing uh, with respect to getting T17s. We wanted it to be that more accessible across the board. Um, and so, uh, yes, we added a kind of diminishing return. So, uh, like, your first one might be quite probable, the next one's less, and the next one less, and then you're not going to get, like, you know, 20 T17s in one map kind of thing going on. Right. Um, it is also worth noting T17s cannot drop T17s. They are not self-sustaining. Oh. The intention is that you are still kind of doing T16s and occasionally diving into T17s. Interesting. Unless you want to trade, of course, in which case, you know, the world's your oyster. So I saw they have a their own new mod pool. Um, and we saw things, one of the mods I saw was uh, Ray Monsters remove 10% life, mana, and ES on hit. The mana removed on hit seems to break a, a lot of builds in particular whenever that sort of thing comes up. Uh, as man is generally a pretty finely tuned system in Path of Exile. And it gets me thinking in general about mods like 80% reduced recovery and things that disable auras and stuff like that. Thanks for and all the it subs, feels everybody. just a bit not too dissimilar to monsters just being immune to your build, right? Um, so what's the intention behind those sorts of modifiers in maps? Um, it certainly was the ideal dream back when that there are a lot of modifiers that can't be done by every build and you'd re-roll them and whatnot now obviously in the context of t17s you can't re-roll them so this really is um mm. you should either change your play style take your time be a bit more careful um to do it or you can trade it away of course or maybe you simply can't run it on that character and you have to maybe build a different character that is capable of doing or more characters that are capable of doing different maps um, there is one tool though that is in the form of a scarab. Okay. Um, one of the scarabs I'm gonna be gives listening. you additional crafting modifiers on your map device. It isn't a common scarab by back. any means. You can't just use it on every T17. But two of the extra crafting mods that get applied to the map device is that prefixes are disabled and suffixes are disabled. So you can pick one of those. So if you do get one of these T17s, I do expect sometimes and you're like, ah, I can't run it because of this modifier. You can at least use that scarab to turn that off occasionally. Um, so it is like one of the tools that you can use to uh, get around certain mods that it might be too hard or you can't quite get through. But the general idea is that you do have to actually think about these modifiers, play around them, change your characters. It's not to just a kind of like, well, you don't have to elk them. They drop rolled, but it shouldn't just be a T17 is mindless go in there and do it. Unless, of course, your build is so strong and so diverse that it can do that, which that's fine. If you want to build your character that way, then... You know, that's what the game allows you to do, and that's what we like, so. 
Right on, right on. We'll uh, jump back to the league a little bit before we uh, move on to some of the other end game questions that I have. Uh, but uh, what you're doing with the difficulty control for Necropolis, where you can select which monsters get buffed in which ways, seems like a lot of what people have been asking for, especially with Afflictions launch, where we didn't have as precise control over the difficulty of content we were facing. That said, how do you weigh up giving this level of control against things like adding to the time it takes to jump into the gameplay? I saw that this is going to take a bit of time to like read through those things and shuffle the menu each time. Um, so obviously we like giving control. Um, but yes, in this league, you cannot skip the difficulty. Um, mm. Having the control is a way to make it easier or harder if you want. Um, but you cannot skip it. If you just enter the area and you don't interact with the lantern, you'll get whatever randomly generates. So you don't have to, I'd say throughout the campaign, like it is going to be harder by not into engaging with it, but you don't have to engage with the league in the sense of interacting with that UI. Um, but you will have to deal with the fact that some monsters are harder. So you, this is a rare league where we, in this case, you can't really skip it, um, yeah. which isn't something we do a lot, um, but you know, occasionally we get back into that and try it out. Um, now, that being said, uh, yes, obviously we like difficulty, being able to manipulate the difficulty, um, and I think it is, and obviously the rewards as well. Now, it just needs to be the case that it is worth your time from a reward standpoint engaging with that. If that isn't the case, we have failed. Like it obviously should be worth your time from a reward point to go, oh, awesome, I got this thing, I need to put on uh, some XP, I need to put it on this pack, or you get like, you know, the pack spawns Torment Spirits on death, I need to make sure it's on this pack. Like there are certainly lots of uh, positive mods that, or like spawning lesser shrines, right? If you put that on a very rare pack, um, you're not going to get very many of them. If you put it on a common pack, all of a sudden you're going to have a whole bunch of shrine buffs throughout the area, which in turn also makes it easier. So not only does this league make it harder, it also makes it easier in some ways. Um, now, one thing you said talking about the time, like obviously when you get to end game, um, which like for every map you do get presented with that UI, but because we have added the uh, nodes on the Atlas tree for Necropolis, we have added a keystone that al allows you to, well, effectively what it says is the mods are applied randomly and there are more mods, so it is harder and mm. it is more rewarding in some senses but you then don't get to customize it but if someone is like oh i don't want to have to deal with interacting with that between my maps um you can just run the map and it will randomly do it and like that isn't necessarily to say that that's better or worse it's just one of the ways someone can customize their experience here um but yeah so through the campaign you don't have to use the ui but it'll probably be harder and less rewarding so you should be wanting to do it unless of course you just want to get to end game go for it and at end game, if you want to invest in the keystone, you can skip doing it on the maps themselves if you, again, don't want to have to deal with it. So ideally, we've given, you know, the choice here to do both versions and play the way you want to play. I think that's um, really clever using the Atlas passive tree as like a tool to be able to customize that league experience. Now, I'm to the point that I'm surprised it hasn't happened before. Lightning! Right? <laughs> we were talking about trying I'm to back. find what a I way miss. and we were talking about like check boxes and all that and it's all just a little bit inelegant and um, it was actually a suggestion of one of the programmers was like we could do a keystone and then we're like hey we never actually do tree support for the current league. Like it's just Dropped your tacos. That we've really considered and embargo um, ended i know but there, I, like, i'm listening Wait, we should just do this like of course we should do this like this is going to be fun and allow people to do different strategies and like why not the whole chat um, saying so, revert I think it is a good addition. we'll see how it actually plays i hope they um, don't because it's the first time we're doing it and then they we won't. may continue doing it for future leagues or maybe it was just it's terrible we'll see and <laughs> we'll not do it again well who knows i mean we think it's cool here um but you know we're not always right all right. Um, so in the campaign, the monsters you kill in one zone affect what happens in the next zone, like the amount of devoted monsters, modifiers that show up. Um, and this is the first time I recall seeing a league like this where it, what you do in one affects like kind of the next zone like that. Um, does it work on like any next zone you enter? The even graveyard like part sounds crazy. Zone or somewhere in a different act or something? Um, no, no. So this doesn't... Uh... The league actually doesn't isn't customizable when accessing through waypoint or through the world map, oh. um, which is very d bit different. I mean, you might think, oh, but my blood aqueduct farming, and yeah, sure, you can still do it technically by <laughs> farming from town. But we're also like, you know, I, not that I know how many people even still do that outside of like, you know, SSF tabular farming, which I still don't even know of necessarily as a strategy. Um, 
But either way, yes, farming the same zone over and over is not really embraced in this league. Um, the difficulty will still be there, but you won't be able to customize Amazing the Amazing chili, I love my wife. Whoa, nice either. wife. Mm. Um, so it's more for like, you know, the linear playthrough when you're going through. Let me get some um, chili. So... Soul's the it works. Yeah, the way it works <laughs> effectively is like the more haunted monsters you kill the more likely you will get devoted modifiers it's a campaign only feature it doesn't happen in maps maps are completely randomly generated per item um, um so you, it is it, it's an interesting way where it works a little bit differently in the campaign than maps which i think is is interesting i quite i kind of like having subtle differences there i was listening while um, i was gone and yeah the more haunted monsters you kill the more likely you are to get devoted monsters and this is actually a reward for why you want to make it hard because if let's just using mud flats as the example if you put all the hard mods, if you have, say, two out of four of the packs, or however many packs there are, have haunted mods, you might want to say, I'm going to make that easier and put them on the zombies and water elementals. But those yeah. are the least common monsters in that area, and thus you are less likely to now get devoted modifiers to appear when transitioning into either Fetid Pool or um, Next. Uh, Submerged Passage. So... You actually have an incentive. I can't believe the, the league is starting at the uh, same time. I'm fucking blown away. They are like the dominant monster in that area. Uh, what? Um, which is kind of interesting. So again, like there are pros and many pros. Console starts on the same day at the same time um, as PC. And then yeah, when first you time next, ever. Uh, when you next peer through the lantern, it will like show what <clears> you got. Um, I'm blown away at that. And yeah, hopefully you get as many good ones as you can. But also the other thing, just while we're on that topic, of the other reason why it's actually sometimes good to make things harder, yeah. um, in some sense. Excuse me. Uh, there's so many axes here that it's it's, <laughs> it's more like you want as many monsters as possible haunted by as many high tier things as possible. Um, is that the haunted monsters are the ones that can turn into the ones that you collect for crafting. So again, if you want to maximize your crafting output, mm -hmm. you want to be putting the haunted modifiers of the highest tiers on the most the are uh, the packs that have the highest density and pack size. Um, so again, going into mud flats as the example, you want to have the rowers do that if you want to maximize your crafting output. So there are two axes and rewards for why you want to be making things harder. But often what I will, I would say people are probably going to be like, I'm going to make things a bit easier to start with as they get yeah, comfortable right. with their character, as the character gets more powerful, they start to take a little bit more risks in that regard. And of course, if it becomes too hard and they over, over make it too hard for themselves, over um, the mods rotate pretty frequently, like to the point if you're like running through an area, the next time you, if you then had to recreate that area, um, because you're like, nah, this is, I've made it too hard. Um, the mods will be ro have rotated, and you can adapt your decisions and be like, yeah, this is easier for me now. I'll, I'll, I'll wait a few more areas or some more levels until I then raise the difficulty again. So, how clearly is that like reward system communicated in the UI? Can like someone who hasn't like watched this know that you know killing more of these monsters will give more devoted to the next zone? How well is it communicated in the UI? Uh, that isn't currently communicated, but it will be. Um, you okay. probably didn't see it in the live stream, but we will do that. Um, at least on the hovers, when you hover over and it just says devoted, yep. we will put like a little, um, you know, like well. We'll put it on the hovers of all the like tier things where it says like you know servant haunted, noble haunted, etc. A whole other um, chat room talking it says shit something, about but I can't remember what. Left yeah, mouse we'll, button. We'll do a um, uh, you know, a pass on making the things whole more chat and all of that. It's actually kind of interesting on that point um, that uh, this is the first time in Poe where you have information about what is in a zone and what the pack compositions are and like just information yeah. about monsters. And there's just information generally there about like what monsters do and so on. Yeah. Um, which is kind of not really something we've ever really done before. Um, so this UI actually sort of provides that. And it'll be interesting to see like whether that's actually useful and like whether we want to think about how we might communicate that again in the future. Because like all that's now sort of a thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I got really excited actually when I saw that. I was yeah, it's like, like a like, bestiary. Oh, we can actually see what their the... abilities are and damage types. Yeah, game. Like, I was like, there's um there's an, uh, along that note there's a, quite an interesting feature in maps that um because maps uh, have uniform density distribution of packs so um generally in a map you're going to have like uh I think it's five or six five packs or whatever and you're going to have twenty it's generally going to be that there's twenty percent of the map is each pack so in maps there are these extra little symbols which I don't think were in the live stream that we've kind of added in more recently which are variants so sometimes a certain pack is going to have higher 
like pack size or mod effect or density and there'll be these kind of up and down arrows to kind of show like this pack's gonna be more common and this one's gonna be less common and stuff like that. Just to add that variance so that those variables can still play a, a role in um, when interacting the turtle with the modifiers. Hideout? Otherwise yeah, it would just cool. be like, you know. How much is that shit, 100 bucks? And then 90% of packs you probably wouldn't care too much about. So we've added extra variables bucks? to make it that the packs and maps. Fuck that. Um, you know. 90 bit, bucks? You know, have more influence on your decisions. 90 that bucks all day? You, you can buy a real turtle for 90 you bucks. Might, you might actually think <laughs> more about it. Yeah. You're talking about your up and down arrows there. Maybe realize what the next league is going to be. Monster stock market investing. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, so, Mr. Yeah, Goonbones. Yeah, let's do it. And everyone. <laughs> um so i'm gonna go off topic a little bit here and answer a uh, a chanted question in chat so that we can get back on track um so we one sec there we go um so you've been flooding us with a lot of great quality of life updates in the lead up to this release Left uh mouse button. Like some spring cleaning is going on right now which i love to see uh, that said, at least one of them seems to have missed the mark, which is the automation change and the resulting removal of the ability to bind instant skills to le left click movement. So having your steel skin on left click and having go. it that way. So this seems to be a pretty unpopular change. And I just want to ask you guys, why do you feel like that is? Why, why is it so unpopular? Um, <laughs> a fair f I'll, I'll go into a few things here. But yes, obviously missed the mark on this one. As I said, we're not always right. Um, but missed the mark? Extra. I do, however, think this is solving some good things the way we've done it. But the problem is it hasn't obviously solved it entirely. And going from a bad solution to a bad solution, at least from our perspective, is not what we should be doing. Um, so we will make further changes. I just don't know exactly when and to what degree. Um, there's obviously discussions going on. So to get into some details there, um, I do believe that it is beneficial now that it is a more observable mechanic, a less like hidden specialized mechanic of, you know, like you can follow a build guide and you can see, oh, this person's using this instant skill, but at no point does a user necessarily know they, they should randomly, unintuitively bind it to left click to have it autocast. The, what, the way yeah. that was before was just, I think, like more than anything, it just felt like such a strange, like why should this even be a thing kind of you know like like it's like it's sort of it's it was kind of almost exploiting a quirk and just the way that our input system was rather than really yes. being like an actual mechanic we decided to exist i think that was probably where we started to feel like oh you know this is like because i remember when i was discussing with mark and i was kind of like this really like if you tell a new user about this thing and the way that it works and why it is the way that it is it's kind of like this just sounds so dumb um <laughs> and that's kind of why we were kind of sort of keen to change it um but on the other hand um i guess the problem well yeah i mean ultimately the issue there is that you know that the solution is a reduction in character power due to the fact that you need to have an extra um, support socket and yeah. um yeah. you know without compensation that obviously feels really bad so uh well, yeah i do i do stand by the like being able to have a trigger while stationary is an advantage and being able to use multiple is an advantage but of course then we talk about more <laughs> into you. socket pressure right using multiple unless you were already using multiple uh you know isn't reasonable for most characters so hmm. but and we can talk about all kinds of like what the actual solutions would be but effectively from my perspective i come down to if these things are just becoming passive skills then why are they not just passive skills that's what i've kind of come to recently hmm. like, we should probably take all of these make them like why how is a time of need not different from steel skin i understand one of them is regeneration and one of them is mitigation but in the sense that like effectively what we're saying steel skin molten shell etc is is now every 10 seconds do something for y seconds mm -hmm. which is exactly what a lot of our passives do and so i was just thinking like we could move a lot of these into passives uh and then what we could do is actually take what we originally intended for those skills and design they're not going to revert that are because they were intended to be reactionary and it'd be nice to actually design some stuff that is useful for that. Um, now, obviously, that's a longer Thanks, discussion Faith designing the Jod. specifics of all the skills. But there are also some objective problems that, and balance problems that did happen from this outside of socket pressure. And I can at least cover some of them now. Um, yeah. Like what? So I'll start with, okay, G uh, General's Cry, obviously nerfed by this, right? It isn't nerfed yep. if you were to use it manually. Um, it is nerfed automated. And when you look at it, no one's using it manually. Everyone's using it automated. <laughs> And when I say everyone, I obviously mean, you know, the majority of people. 
So we are buffing General's Cry, and we are doing some other things Warcry adjacent, like, um, I think there's some inconsistencies on a bunch of unique items, which have, like, casting a Warcry and using a Warcry, and we're uh -oh. making that more consistent, um, so that more things work uh, in that regard, but that's, there's heaps of little nitty-gritty details there. Patch notes will hopefully clarify all that. Um, now, then there's mines, which is a big one. Yeah. Um, now, mine playstyle, aside from the annoying having it on left click, it going like tink, 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 tink the whole time, and that just being <laughs> irrit irritating, um, it is certainly the case that when it is triggering all the time with a support gem, obviously, if you now you want can't to, stack them on a boss, um, play have the playstyle of throwing heaps of mines and then moving to detonate them all at once, which is how mines are meant to be played. You could do that before, and now you can't. So to change that, we've added a mastery for mines, which uh, does the exact same behavior as before, which the mastery says your mines will detonate every X milliseconds while moving, and it will occur the moment you start moving from a stationary position. Okay. Um, That's another passive point you've got to use, the other though. third one I'll get into Clap here minus is, one uh, passive. Is, uh, bone armor from Necromancer. So uh, goodbye, bone armor. <gasps> and we have read some of the nodes around there. Um, so... What have we changed? I'll see if I can remember all the details here. Uh, I think it's mindless aggression. A note, all these notables are going to probably be renamed due to the theme change, but I'll use the old names just because that's what everyone will know. Um, yeah. So mindless aggression is um, now multiplicative 10% more minion damage and multiplicative 20% more minion life Sounds um, good. instead of the increased damage and increased speed. This is... Possibly worse as a two-pointer at like level 30, but in-game far, far, far superior in terms of actual damage output. You could argue it's slightly worse with spiritual aid, but I think that is that loss is ultimately inconsequential with the other changes here. Um, then there's the four-pointer <clears throat> uh, bone barrier, um, which we are going to keep the PDR stat and the... Um, uh, Remember. Oh, okay, what we're doing is we're moving bone armor and we're adding a large amount of minion uh, life is added as extra energy shield, which will increase the minion survivability for the uh, amount lost by bone armor. Um, so okay. that should provide a good mitigation against, like, well, again, obviously with the mechanic of energy shield recharging, um, it'll help a lot towards your minions. Like, they take a bit of. They're still saying and revert and LMB. And, you know, it's not foolproof, but that's fine. Um, what you have lost is obviously the bleed removal from them. Um, uh, deal with it is my answer. Get over one. it, bitch. Um, what we actually did find, by the way, is a lot of necromancers weren't actually using <laughs> bone Thank armor, you. and a lot were just using molten shell anyway. Um, so I don't know how much of that is actually lost. Um, and I know this is a bit of a rant, but I'll just keep going, because, again, people want to know about these changes. Um, what else did we change there? Well, we also one more thing. Did you change the leech thing, or is that...? Yeah, so there is a... Oh, I don't want to misremember exactly. Um, I'll go into the Unholy Might thing first. <laughs> um, so <laughs> Unholy Might, we are actually changing what Unholy Might does, uh, which is better for summoners in some regards, but more so poison summoners, and better for everyone else in many regards. So Unholy Might now is 100% of physical converted to chaos, as well as cool. a, I think it's 25% chance to apply wither on hit. 100%? Um, so hopefully that is uh, enabling a lot more different unique yeah. items and obviously wow. some rebirth and all of that throughout the game. Um, but also poison summoners, uh, in theory, uh, don't also now have to use a wither setup, and so they get some gems there, I suppose. But, you know, that's not exactly necessarily going to be a meta build. Um, uh, but we have changed Extract Dementus because that gave permanent Unholy Might to... Poison SRS, that you means think? That means that with CI, now you will have a physical and chaos immunity against monsters, and that was a little bit busted with, you know, <laughs> worm flush cool. shenanigans. So, um, anyway, that's been adjusted, and... Uh, click, click. I can't remember. We, we were experimenting with some leech. I can't remember if we um, stuck with it, but I think we had no. a... Um, 1% uh, of damage dealt by minions is leached to you as life, replacing the recovery on um, Bone Barrier as well, That's which should nice. account for a lot more incoming life recovery. I will double check that and I will post <laughs> that afterwards just in case we went through. Get LMB'd? Yeah, he did get LMB'd, huh? So that leaves one major problem. I just LMB'd that motherfucker. Especially on summoners. 
and we are actively discussing um, solutions to that one. I think where we are currently landing is that we want to have um, corruption implicit, possibly on all the different minion uh, base types, so bone ring, um, the bone shield, and the weapons, minion weapons, which grant various different skills like convocation, uh, the offerings, uh, desecrate. Um, I know a lot of people end up just auto casting uh, desecrate and <laughs> offerings with the Thank wand, you. but for people who don't have this, this that's good. And at the very Thanks, least, Shigo. generally convocation is Inmate, unlinked. Kyle. Um, we might even do the golem skills Everyone. as corruptions too. I'm, I'm a bit iffy on that one, so I know I ne generally I shouldn't say things that we're not definitely doing, but uh, you know I'm just speaking freely on that one. So hopefully that is at least a temporary solution to alleviate some socket pressure. But we probably do need to do more. But doing more in the next week is you know probably kind of hard. So I would look forward to hopefully seeing more of that in the future. Uh, but that's where we're at with that pretty much. Um, They're not <laughs> going to really like, it. This uh, automation change kind of revealed just how much of a like very potent Band-Aid the left click automation was because it's opened up this whole can of worms of being like, well, it, it's exposed how these skills designs are all a bit problematic. You know, these ones that encourage you to have them just up all the time, cast off cooldown, it, these are things that potentially need to be readdressed, right? Uh, for sure. Like, I mean, this does happen a lot. I mean, if you even if you look at the Pantheon change, which was one of the first quality of life things we announced, like... That's cool. You know, it's like, well, we're going to change this Pantheon thing. Like, surely that's good for everyone, not having to redo. And then all of a sudden it's like, but but now I don't want to always have chill effect on and all yeah. this. And we're just looking at these things going, Pantheons equals positive buffs. But then there are all these niche builds and Johnny builds that end up with taking these upsides and turning them into, they become downsides. And so now we have to adapt another thing. Like often what happens is um, we change a system that we entirely think is positive. Um, and yes, either because we've uh, not given it enough time internally or because again, it's very hard for even a hundred people to find things as quickly and as actively the as- The bald guy's the not there. Thousands of people. Yeah, where's um, Chris? So, yeah, we find that there are things we What's then have to do afterwards to fix. So obviously, we address the Pantheon thing by allowing you on a character by character basis to um, then disable and enable uh, the, a Pantheon upgrade. Yeah, both these guys um, have hair. It's a bunch of niche builds. Um, Boo. But yeah, with a game as like, like expansive as part of Exile, with all the millions of different builds, it is pretty hard to change anything without affecting something. Um, no Chris, no buy. It was just we made a change that affected <laughs> it's free. a lot more than we had originally thought about. And yeah, we're doing a lot of solutions. It's free, there, dude. But there is certainly need for a much grander solution. Isn't that insane that, that this shit is free? But I think where we're at right now is it's probably weird. pretty good. Um, I am never ever going to be happy with the fact anyone feels like they need they need to do some sort of numlock shenanigans. Um, or whatever the crazy strategies are, that is not okay. And as such, we need to, if that is still happening, we need to still fix more. Yeah, yeah. When there's like one of these things where you change something and it's like, this will be good once we get these other things implemented. Down yeah, you could still do it, right? Do By numb locking it, maybe, like, like in Diablo 3. Change until you can get it all done at once. Well, I think I, I, um, sometimes, but I think in this case, I think we're in, I think the lesser evil has been met. And yeah. I think that it is worth sticking to this one, um, uh -oh. especially with us fixing all those actual objective problems with the balance and actual nerfs that occurred as a result of it. Sure, not every single use case is covered, but um, I think the other ones are nowhere near as consequential. Um, and I do think it will actually play relatively well. Uh, but yeah, oh, in some cases, shit? yeah, we, I'm sitting there like, okay, do we revert that or do we, you know, aim to get all the fixes in? We're generally pretty fast with reacting to things like this. We generally can make changes pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, it is a hard decision to make for sure. Um, like you definitely lose sleep over that one. Um, but mm -hmm. like those, that's what we do. And um, often as, as like, it's actually responding to this one has actually been fun in at least a development sense because it is promoting a bunch of these other changes that have been like honestly needed for a while. Yeah. Um, like, especially when it comes to the socket pressure thing, like, it is honestly unacceptable that we have not really addressed that in quite some time. Um, I, so, yeah, I mean, I, I ideally, I, I can't promise by the end of next week we have the right answer, and I can't promise we're necessarily going to do something. Damn, but these guys work pretty we hard. Actively going to we have been actively discussing and will continue actively Got discussing. Got all these weird the nerds breathing down their necks. 
I, uh, yeah, like I said, it was it was such an effective band-aid that like ripping it off now has like allowed you to kind of get to the meat of some of these problems, which uh, I'm excited to see what you do with these like skills that are all have this design where they were just chucked on left click because hopefully we get some more much more interesting skills out of it down the line. Working devs. As a result. I'm not yeah, falling I for oh, it. I mean, already I have a lot of cool ideas. It's just a matter of now like, finding the resources to get them all for in it. and whatnot. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> So uh, on the since we're on the quality of life topic, something that bugged me quite a bit lately is getting attacked while talking to NPCs, especially in Affliction. I didn't end up getting through all the lore because I constantly getting attacked. But uh, in the preview footage, I even noticed, I don't know if you ended up using a different version, but the uh, player had the issue of talking to the nameless seer and getting attacked by a mob. Have you guys considered using pause tech to pause the game no. during NPC conversations when you're otherwise defenseless or maybe other solutions like making you untargetable during dialogue? Um, I would say yes, at least in the con especially in the context of POE two, which does have pausing. Um, Is there any actual reason we can't add pausing to POE one? Oh, you're doing it again? Uh, probably not. Uh, <laughs> like I, I know it's kind of been one of those things that we've. Uh, sorry, <laughs> it's one of those things that like we kind of did, and then we're like, well, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to talk to Reese and find out uh, what limitations there were. We certainly Let were scared cook. by it. Um, uh, when we first added it, it was like this is going to break so much shit. But then it, it didn't really in POE two, so maybe it wouldn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm, I can't see any obvious reason why it wouldn't be able to be ported over. Relative, uh, hmm. the, you never know. There'll be yeah. something, but it's probably something we can work around. Right, right. I mean, the thing that does suck a little bit about pausing during NPC conversations, though, is that um, there's various triggers that occur, and um, so it won't. If we just enabled it like that. Like it would break stuff like the Fairgraves quest, um, and like things like that. Like there's a, there's there are some things that would break if we did that immediately. But like it's the kind of thing we, we, could we would have to it. find a way to be able to pause, uh, or like opt into pausing on some and not on others. And... There's also the, the question of other people in the zone. Um, yeah. As well. like, there's like a ton there's of random things that would probably the way our pausing works right now is everyone has to have opted into a pause for it to be paused. <laughs> so. But I mean, technically in multiplayer, if you're in proximity like that, yeah. you can just be like, defend me to your friend, I suppose. But they might just run off and start right. trying to loot some stuff and leave you to die. Um, right, right. But yeah, I guess the counter argument is like, you know, what about things like having safe zones around NPCs? And I would say that I have yet to find many games that don't end up just having exploitative cases around that. Um, and that would be a lot more actual work, you know. What about the untargetable buff, a targetable buff on the player while you're using, while they're talking to the NPC? But it's the whole like um, I'm in a map and Alva's there and yeah. like oh no I'm gonna die or something so or like I just want to reprieve and I just I mean, go and like <laughs> click Alva and then I'm like oh phew I'm safe now and then I get in a world like, where people can log out how is that like like problematic? <laughs> I mean you're not wrong but it feels like well at least logging out has a cost to the portal right like I I mean <laughs> it isn't quite the same. Yeah. Um, but in the sense that like they should take out logging it out it feels exploitative whereas logging out it does not like it feels like yes it does a mechanic that's unintended for that like i wouldn't want to do a solution that I, again i feels counter like argue i counter argue that comment because i think logging out feels exploitative me too whereas i know you're talking to an npc who protects yeah. you with a bubble because they have npc right. magic i'm like that seems like an in-game thing like that I, seems right. I, I i i buy that but also logging me out too. here we too of course um will log you back right back oh into yeah where you were, don't, be careful now because you're going to get us talking into changing how logout works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why I, not? I, I say, after the hands-on with Peewee 2, I, I love the change that shit. The, um, for re connecting you exactly where you were when if the game crashes or something. Like, so yeah, good. yeah. Um, which was turned out to be very beneficial during the test we just did, considering the number of crashes there still were in the build. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> it you know, at least you could log back into exactly yeah. where you were and just continue. It certainly helped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, there, something you there might... There will be a solution to your problem is what I'm saying. Right. Everything might be one <laughs> of them, and otherwise we'll find... We'll, <laughs> we'll engineer you. and come up with design some other solution. Like There will be something, but yes, it, it has come up quite a bit recently just because of the scope of POE 2, and generally when we're discussing that stuff, we do also think, well, if this is a problem in POE 1... Those kebabs well, were so fucking doing, good, like, dude. It, so. Man, it'll, I it'll love Sumac and Moss so, Musir. Yeah, before we go back to the league, we'll talk about uh, the Happy other Nose. kind of quality of life related thing, which was the uh, announcement of the Ashling yeah, it was Pervin. change. So Pervin we've been itemized Ashling crafts for quite some time, which is pretty awesome that we're getting that now. But it's uh, it seems strange to me that it was at the cost of the current uh, Veiled Orb Chaos style effect. 
that especially was a really nice like um, mid-level entry crafting option for a lot of players. So <laughs> to have that removed seems like quite the bummer as a, you had the you know the more random but more accessible version versus Ashling's much more deterministic but you know more expensive, more costly version. So why did you uh, get rid of the regular veil? Yeah. Or... I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say the intentions to just get rid of things, but I also kind of don't see it as a loss to be able to kind of, um, where possible, not retain every single little crafting thing. I would say that the crafting is, at this point, like quite bloated in a sense of like, it is quite hard for a, for someone who isn't reading into and studying profusely to uh, figure out exactly how to craft the best item. And that's not necessarily a problem, but taking the opportunities to remove something that is honestly just bloat at some point is a win, especially if we can find a way to bring it back into the game a different way that feels a bit more core and fundamental. And maybe you'll find that with, say, the Necropolis crafting system. Like that's that going to be crazy. Is, in theory, a start to end game meant to be crafting. You can do crazy stuff at the end. You can do really simple stuff. It's going to be um, complicated. Game, early game. And then, obviously, when we then go to say, is this coming core? Like, are we... How do we want to do it? If we want to do it, maybe it's absolutely busted in so many ways that we don't want to. We'll, we'll see. But there's always more crafting things we're adding. Like, you're not... You, you don't have a shortage of different crafting things in the game. Like, it's certainly... <laughs> Um, a little bit out of control in a good way and in sometimes a bad way um, and more are going to come so I wouldn't worry about losing something like that in the short term especially <laughs> when um, you know you only need to wait a league or two for things like they that are to both crossing the same legs just so many other ways to cross that's true um, I don't think losing that is ultimately fundamental and the win of having obviously it be tradable is huge um, got a I job interview much, today uh, hey good luck man trying my best to get Hope around get as it. many of the uh like you know services as opposed to trades um we're doing a lot 100%. as much as possible like i and i eventually want to make sure we add a thing where for even mirroring items, even though that's like the, the nichest of the niche in the game, you know, we're talking about, you know, the select few. I do want it to be that, you know, there is a way that you can do that without having to trade your items to someone. So hmm. there are a few designs there even, and you know, like- That would will, be crazy. Hopefully we will eventually get rid of as much of that as possible, especially when it comes to trusting someone with your item. I don't hmm. like that at all. Um, so hmm, yeah, cool. we'll, we'll hopefully work around, but, you know, obviously, like, services like boss kills and all of that, there's not really a lot you can do about that. Um, that's completely fine. But um, when it comes to actually, like, loaning someone your item, I'm, I'm certainly not kind of in favor of that thing. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully we can see the removal of the Good rest idea. of those in due time. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I'm super keen on those changes. The um, So if the if the thinking is to kind of, like, slim down on some bloat, I certainly don't disagree that, like, the trades is the crafting system might have like a bit much going on <laughs> um i think in this particular instance the reason why you've seen this reaction to it is this particular one little aspect of bloat it was actually kind of like used in almost every mid-level craft so it's it feels a little bit jarring to uh, see it removed i guess um fair enough and i guess the answer there is uh a necropolis will provide a one of the most in-depth crafting systems we ever have and you could oh, argue God. about standard league but i mean you know my answer again there is deal with it um and then later on there will be more crafting systems and more deal new things and more interesting things so i'm not gonna lie i'm super excited about the necropolis crafting uh, i was so uh, the thing i said after last league i was like you guys have to do like some sort of crafting league this time i feel like it's the only answer to like the whiplash of <laughs> previous league so let's let's talk a bit about that actually so affliction was uh a lot of people's potential favorite league maybe mine um <laughs> was certainly extremely rewarding uh why do you think it was so popular and were you worried about kind of like coming into this league after that the correction effectively um why do we think it was so popular i mean obviously i mean at the start it kind of wasn't in so many ways. <laughs> Thank um, you. It was certainly too difficult. We certainly messed up a bit there. Thanks, um, monks. Once things were kind of fixed, and once people kind of got their heads around, or you know, around the difficulty of the character builds to handle the difficulty, yes, it became Magic Find Ruckus League. <laughs> um, the why was it popular? I mean, it was different. It's not something we had done before in so many regards. It was using 
um, new art and uh, obviously the yeah it was the art had all the stuff it had so many yeah it was the new art arts, amigo um, and existing old ones put into it like the omens and all kinds of little things it just had heaps of little detail the ascendancy classes I mean people like that but ultimately yes we can just go to the magic find mm-hmm. um, I'll tell you I've never had that experience before I've never I've never you know been to the point where well not quite like this where really it feels like the only thing left on the filter is uh, unique leather belts and uh, unique heavy belts off. and a couple other things and there's still too many belts to try and I like you're still <laughs> just like oh my god there are freaking yeah belts that everywhere. was crazy um, it, you know, I thought so it ruined too it far. yeah <laughs> to say the least I mean even just from a server perspective uh, the the uh, the level of the num like the number of players we could get on a on a, on a server per per uh, uh, the, per server this league was uh, much lower than it has been before <laughs> and uh even that was a bit of a started to become a bit of a problem like my, yeah uh yeah. so the primary issue there is actually what happens <laughs> when you. monsters stay alive longer because thanks of john city last yep. long, my life longer they are yep. getting hit more and when a monster is alive they cost more than when they're dead and so the <laughs> moment and then obviously when you've got a stygian spires spewing out 700 monsters a, a second yep um and then they combined with up. like you know the 12 50 percent increased attack speed soul leaders and all of that you know like you are nothing nothing can survive that level of absolute mayhem um as in hardware wise um so but yes uh it, there is going to be a bit of a detox um to some degree but on the other hand, we have sh- changed a lot in the end game to the point where hopefully the meta is so different that it kind of just feels a little bit different as opposed to... It's going to be like a new like game, dude. Worse. Um, there is one other change I'll talk about. and Three um, Atlas trees? People's feedback. Um, so one problem I, uh, that we kind of have is that the amount of... Uh, like Obviously, if, if you were to farm uh, Magebloods, Headhunters, etc. via Divination Cards... Um, like there is a somewhat reliable way to get that. You get your doctors, you get your apothecaries and whatnot. And you saw the new um, divination card scarabs. Obviously, we're like embracing that. We're not changing anything around. I that. don't miss wandering but one path. Thing that whatever. I do consider problematic, and we have made changes around is stack decks. So stack decks, uh, a lot of those uniques are coming from stack decks. And so we have actually made some changes where uh, the league rewards of various leagues, especially the ones that were quite uh, high, so stuff like Tujin and a few, few other leagues, we have cut back on the amount of stacked decks they're giving. Whoa. Um, and that, okay, nerf like, Tujin. Oh, wow, nerf my, my fun stacked decks. To compensate for that, and what it has allowed us to do is we have actually multiplied the drop rates of your mage bloods, your headhunters, etc., by two and a half times. Whoa. For world drops. And the intention there is that you are seeing more from actual drops instead of just from stacked deck spam. And with stacked deck, it was certainly on the chopping block. Mage blood um, and was, headhunter two point five x. Gunning for stacked deck, like you were <laughs> to get that thing. Out. But Whoa, two point five times together, zero. The thing that kind of sucks a bit is that you're getting um, sweet uh, rewards for. Um, for for bosses for boss kills. That people actually, to do yet. actually not anymore. Uh, we have changed, which yeah, I mean, it's true that uh, which I don't know if people saw, but stack decks cannot yield divination cards that would give items from exclusive bosses anymore. Yeah, that was definitely a, a thing that sucked. Was that you know, like you you want the exclusive That's old items news. to some extent to, mm-hmm. to 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 feel like okay, you you pr- you proved that you killed this guy by having that item. So you know, there are some corner cases like you know the gambler and the void that we're doing some specific handling around, but um. In general, you should be seeing a lot less like random star forges appearing before anyone's even killed Uber Shaper kind of thing. My day is um, going great. And also, you, obviously, you've still got the How's void yours? keys that will yield it. You've got uh, Valdo's maps, which will yield whatever people have chosen to give there, which is probably just a bunch of mage blood, mage blood still. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, ultimately, yeah, we want to see a lot more of those drops come from uh, actually killing monsters. And from farming divination cards the way we intended, uh, excuse me, which is by actually farming the counter, as opposed to just mass stack decks. All the maps had to be in because people paid for them. Um, I hope that is forever. received positively, of course, because I genuinely believe it is better. But um, uh, let us know. We'll, 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 we have a little bit of time to make some changes there if needed. Right on, right on. I'll let people share their opinions on that one. I mean, to me, it's. Uh, I, I like the idea of boss drops coming from the bosses and not just right. from random 
Poison SRS? I'm not playing yeah, that shit. Hell no. Rush. We'll see. <laughs> but I bet it's going to be good. Someone wins in chat, so it seems like okay. the most positive. Positively cool. received. You can feel oh, a sigh, awesome. sigh of relief, perhaps. Oh, 100% <laughs> of physical as chaos? So I think everyone agrees that Affliction was like probably a bit crazy on the economic side of things and what was yeah. dropping and everything like that. And I must say, like, I played the most I've ever played this league. And um, I was getting to the point, like, in that two months phase where I was, like, doing things and uh, creating builds and doing content that I just hadn't done before. And I think a lot of players had that same experience. And looking at the overall economy, I expected with how crazy the league was for things to be ruined. But because that term gets thrown around a lot when an, an economy is different. But the net the like end result felt really positive for most people where like sure some things like if you were trying to compete with the giga juices for the items that they were trying to buy like their bows or whatever then yeah you were having a hard time but for the most part a lot of stuff was really accessible and it felt like a really fun league in that regard and that was actually the biggest i think contributed to why it was such a fun league for myself and I think <laughs> yeah, many others. thank you, have any you. Thoughts on that and like that league starting a poison or a trans gem might be captured. tough I mean, I love it. I love how the economy goes wild based on the content we add. Um, it's always interesting to watch and whatnot. Um, I'm thinking about it too, but I don't know if I want to farm one way or another. Lab. But I, I wouldn't say it's like our. I just want to note it's not like our intention to you know get away from that specifically. It's going to take like ten tr tries. We like these it things happening like organically. We like the community figuring out how to get around that but and i didn't do mark lab yeah, I, I did the first it ended lab up being completely fine and honestly completely fun um maybe yeah. not everyone agrees maybe there are a lot of people who are like no it was too hard and i felt like everyone else got ahead of me we don't know too much about that but i mean the league's ending now anyway so what happened happened um but yeah i i mean i do agree at least i played a lot my friends played a lot like we certainly got into it a bunch of people here were playing a lot and i've heard mostly only positivity coming from uh like you know outside of the very early in the league where we had some misbalance like the positivity for affliction was very high um it's actually making me think like a little bit more about how we can find some way to make some of it core but i don't quite know how to do that just yet i mean i don't know if you saw one of, i don't know if it was in there but one of the keystones has the whole like when there's less than 50 monsters remaining your map boss is empowered by wisps yeah. Whoa. Know, in the live stream i can't remember I too many that, yeah. too did many you hear that going on um but um that's like kind of one way at least for now but um there's a lot of good monsters there there's a lot of good like i mean the bosses the and the ascendancies and stuff are interesting it's just it actually is one of the more complicated ones especially when you consider the ascendancies and stuff to try and even think how to it put makes that you want to full clear like, the map a lot of to power, power up the boss um, that's a good you, idea like i don't know hey blue name will do that but and Ideally, even just the <clears throat> magic finding kind of part of it with some regulation to some degree would be fun to add. But I mean, who's to say the current league isn't going to end up having, sure, it won't be a magic finding one so much, but with all the crafting and whatnot, it's probably heavily going to you know, change the economy dynamically and that will evolve over time as well. So I think it's really relieving to hear as a player that you guys are like, you liked what you saw with the outcome of that. Like, I think the technical side of how Affliction achieved that with like, you know, things being laggy. Oh and, yeah, like, Z4 so had their uh, equivalent no of this the recently and it sucked. I mean, we really enjoyed, but there's this perception that I didn't you guys watch it, though. are GGG, sometimes a little bit grinchy about this stuff where you're like, you know, we don't want you to have items and currency. So it's good to hear that. I mean, more I, am play I am playing the game every league till <laughs> high end game and mostly to level 100 and I am Mostly. farming all these things like i'm not sitting there going like damn i don't want all this currency like what i what i don't what i don't like is when you like press alt in the game and you get disconnected from yes. the server or like yeah. random <laughs> stuff like that you know what i mean like it, i don't want it to technically break game uh, crashes like, so, when you push yeah. alt yeah I, I'd, I'd say one big shift like just talking about the playing the game here and like I, I do want to understand like a lot of what all these qol changes are a lot of what we're doing a lot of what more will be done um and I think a lot of what is coming in Necropolis League uh, with respect to the, especially all the in-game changes is a result uh, of our team playing Greater Rift? And it, I can really? A lot more. <laughs> um, I, they're like, bringing back so Greater Rift in Diablo yeah. 4? <laughs> we, we started, so, I mean, the, the whole sextant thing is just no like, way. away from this. And I'm in in-game going like, these guys are total scrubs, I'm like, damn, I don't want to play this anymore. Total and scrubs. I don't want to have to respec all this and then it might be wrong again i want to experiment and try some stuff and like 
that's where you then get the loadouts. And I, obviously I can respec, but I don't want to have to just go trading, which we know is a flawed system currently, and we've spoken about trading a lot and how we are going to improve it, POE2, and then looking at POE1 and around that in the future. But like, I'm sitting here trying to buy unmaking orbs, having the most frustrating time ever just because no one's replying to me <laughs> and all of that. You know, like, I know the pain. Um, and then I'm like, okay, we need some sort of like Atlas tree loadouts or something like that. Like we need to find a way to, <laughs> to have this so that Thank I you. can play the end game the ways I want without feeling so punished. Yes. And this comes into another thing, which is like, okay, like wandering path. Um, you know, I want to play the end game my way, <laughs> but if wandering Thank path you. is quantitatively too strong, then I'm not playing it my way. I'm playing it the way that the meta yeah. tells me I have to because it is too powerful. And so, you know, there's things like that where that's, that comes to why it. we've removed a number of the keystones and whatnot is because it feel, if you feel like you have to do something. <laughs> Thank you. So you could argue, okay, we'll nerf the value. Well, now I don't want to do it at all. So what's the point in it existing? If the keystone is into that binary state of feeling like you have to do it versus not have to do it, get rid of it. That's generally that's how cool. I feel about it and add something Thanks cooler and better. And the new keystones might end up in and the equipped. same ballpark. And, and you know EXC, what? Might remove them Empire later and add new ones as well. Um, <laughs> that's just how it will uh, be. But yeah, anyway. I don't want it to be that the loadouts are like, everyone has tree A, everyone has tree B, everyone has tree C, because the keystones mean that you have to do that. Um, if people want to do that, because that's like, you know, metas are metas. I think the get three that, trees is it's amazing. It's that feeling of, I have to do X. Amazing. Um, that I want to try and get away from. And especially Amazing. for multiple leagues in a row. Like, if it's okay for one league, you have fun. And then if you feel like you have to do something that isn't enjoyable, go away. I don't want it. Like, it, it shouldn't <laughs> exist. You love to hear it. You love to hear it. But I, I have a follow-up question that's completely unrelated. What about <laughs> the rucksack? Um, <laughs> look, you're lucky you got it for those three months or four months. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I, I just no. Ultimately, um, you no might rug see it back one day. But <laughs> no, like, you know, I'm honestly surprised that Chris was even okay to even let you do that. I don't think he was okay with it. Really? Damn. I think I snuck what, you, that did you one stuck that one without? without, without well, you weren't okay with it either. Like, <laughs> it wasn't okay. yeah, we had a massive argument about it. Um, Damn. I oh, no. I assumed that Chris approved it. <laughs> he might have. I don't remember, but. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, like, anyway, the, the luxury of the leagues is we do get to try these things for three or four months. And the yeah. importance is when we do something that we are reluctant about or we are in disagreement about, is that we do reevaluate it at the end of that and decide are we keeping it or not. And it is a firm no on this one. And, firm. Um, you know, like the good thing is we do, because we have these seasonal cycles, the leagues. Uh, we do get to try these things and we do get to do something that we're maybe not quite comfortable with just to really test it. And in this case, uh, yeah, nah, it's not, <laughs> nah. it's not, not staying in. I mean, I, I, I have to respect a firm no, but what, why, why, why? Uh, how come? Well, okay. Why? <laughs> Not to put him, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, sorry. but you know, I was, okay, okay. I was on one half of the hang argument. On, hang, on, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So you're, you're, first of all. Oh, no, I don't want to keep it. First, first of all, Mark ultimately gets to decide this, but at the same time, oh. um, my, feel, my feeling on this stuff is that I don't like it when you have a build choice that results in more inventory space, because that kind of thing like leads to sort of weird incentives. Just give more know, fucking inventory love, space you know, like, for I, everyone. If, if you have to, it, it's like, if, you, if, if I have to change my build to get more inventory space, that just doesn't feel right to me. It's a little bit hard to explain exactly why that is, but like there's, there's various things from games like that. With, um, I, I do actually agree with that one. Having it be on a class is certainly not the right one. Obviously idea. not. I also just personally don't think, I think inventory space limitation is a good thing. Right. I think that pressure is good, and I don't have a personal problem with playing with it. Um, obviously, it's nice to always just have more and more and more and more. Um, but I do think that pressure is interesting, and I do think it is important to have pressure on how much you can pick up and leave a map with. I, especially after yeah. Affliction, I was leaving every map with a full inventory, going like, holy, uh, there's more things I want to take, and I can't, and literally <laughs> there's stacks and stacks of currency on the ground I can't pick up. But I think that is healthy and good, and it makes you make the good decisions. I, um, I don't disagree with that, but I don't think this was actually about the space. The reason why everyone loved the rucksack was that it was a separate space that allowed it right. to be much easier to manage things like your map rolling currency 
and your scrolls and just that random shit that fills up and clutters your inventory that you constantly have to deal with when you're Man, this guy's really blasting them with questions. Stash. There's a real problem there, a quality of life problem that the rock sack inadvertently addressed. And that's why people loved it, I think. Agreed. Uh, fair enough. There are some... Well, at least, okay, so if that is some, say, the problem of rolling maps, for example, um, like, there are better solutions to that, I would say, which is, like, again, I hate talking about this because now everyone's going to want it and it, like, <laughs> makes it sound like it's certainly going to happen, and it isn't necessarily. But, like, surely a, like, inventory attached to your map device yes. that you can open that, like, contains your fragments and whatnot. Yes. You can't put, you can't put stuff on it, and, like, from the map when you pick it up, I guess. Like, uh, I guess from the, the map, benefit, sure, but yeah. if they're just talking about like you know the the, the whole bringing a bunch into roll all your maps and like mm. I don't know, there's there's more quite, to discuss. But I I, I saw this one on the uh, the old quality of life bingo sheet that um, <laughs> was there, and I was I have been thinking about trying to find ways to solve that one, and so I'm hoping that we can find some way to either mitigate or solve that one in the future. I I think it's again, a good idea. No promises, but uh, they should have like uh, an inventory space that um, is yeah, yeah, I can see that like the, solution, the way you keep. I'd be fine with that because like the, to me, like, it's the, not ingredients. The more it's like a separate yeah, inventory that space line, that has things like uh, chisels and shit in, on your it character. Probably is. It's just whether or not we can do it, and whether or not we can come up with it in a reasonable time. Um, it's all well, coin purse. at the end of the day. So, uh, look, I am keeping an engineer eye on the orbs. Sheet. I am quite tact. I'm tactically picking the ones so that we can't complete the bingo <laughs> can't be completed. Um, keep making them bingo not, sheets. Not, a, not actually, but um. Uh, one thing that is important with a lot of these quality of life, it, we are actually, especially with PoE2's development, we are looking at a lot of these things which have been hard nose mm. and really reevaluating. And it's like reevaluate that shit. Really That's has, cool. Like, yeah. But just because, like, as well, Mattis is a like, really little guy. Like new player experience. Mm. Ziggy D is like that, and just like pretty tall. All the stuff people are doing, and like it's, it's kind of good. It's, it's really another shot at like looking at, at all that really core stuff again and thinking. And thinking Mathis about, like, and often, also subtract them. We're both little guys. Some of that stuff very often because it's been there for so long, and then so yeah, just having a chance to like really reevaluate everything really then starts to make you think. Well, why is POE one even like this? Mm -hmm. um, you know, like and it, it makes makes like, ends up making those changes. Like we um we on public is cool. obviously you have uh, uh I, I maybe should everyone was from very here. normal. Um, we have on uh, they're all just Twitch too, actors. Dude. We obviously have no more portal scrolls, and I'm not saying that we're doing that in POE one just yet. However, well, just, yet. just yet, maybe ever. But however, in POE one, what we are adding is, and it's come from the bingo sheet, um, is uh, a bind key to just instantly open a portal um, that you can bind and you don't now have to open your inventory to do it. Uh, I think having, I think having time. to open your inventory during a boss fight or something is not, uh, look with pausing, that's kind of more acceptable because you can now pause, use the portal and it, you don't risk danger, but messing around with that in the midst of combat is not something that you should really have to be doing. And the changes that's to last portals shit. is what really made us reevaluate portal that. button. So, yes. In three twenty four, uh, we, and I'll we'll do the classic, uh, video probably after this or next week or some with us actually showing how it works um, there will be a bind for instantly opening a portal assuming you have a portal scroll in your inventory sick yeah love to hear it all right that's fantastic um, there's been another thing that's been mentioned a lot in chat which is uh, do you have any brief comments on the state of some of the lesser used sentences like gladiator for example any potential reworks or improvements coming to them Break time again. Uh, I certainly want to. Um, I I always love doing that. Um, and last time, obviously, with Chieftain, we missed the mark. But now, during Affliction, with the League meta, obviously, Chieftain grew into fit a little bit with, uh, with the, what, Fulcrum and Could whatnot. Um, so, you know, it's kind of interesting that in last live stream, we discussed that one not really hitting where we want. And now it's got a lot more uses. And maybe this coming League, it'll have a lot less uses. We'll see. Um, it's quite fun how the League changes yeah, how dead we eye. play. However, yes, uh, ascendancy class balances are nice. Eve effectively, we just have to, again, look at what resources we have and decide how much we can do and where we want to target it. We might, generally, we have a big discussion towards the end of each league development and think, what are we going to do next? Look at the problems, look at what we want to do. And we have a list that's bigger than we can do. And often those things are on that list and we have to weigh, like, are we going to do option A or option B? And sometimes balancing an ascendancy class is overall less gain for the players than something else we want to do 
Like, if you would rather multiple Atlas trees and or a Gladiator rebalance, I would hope to think the majority of people are going to be picking the Atlas tree feature. Hell yeah. Um, maybe not everyone, but again, it's it's better for the mass and thus, like, that is what we do. So, yeah, it is a, a resourcing uh, issue at the end of the day. Like, you can only do so much with what you have, but we do, and we do a lot, like, don't get me wrong. Um, but yes, we would get there eventually. Um, it will come up in one of the things, and it is. Gazi TV is do. really tall. Fantastic. All right, we're going to wrap up Path of Exile One Q and A now. Thanks for the very long uh, discussion session. I feel like we could talk about a lot of this stuff all day. Another thing I could talk about all day is Alk is regular, like five ten ish, maybe a little sho the shorter than me. Today. And some broader questions. I don't really remember. Also. So. Let's dive into it. The star of the show today was the Ranger, which had the pleasure I had the pleasure of playing at the. Uh, yeah, the there were a few myself. lovely ladies and, there. Uh, it really showcases how much the impact of the WASD changes uh, that movement system has had on the a overall few. design of the game and skills. And I imagine now you've just like gone back and no crib. had to look at a bunch of different skills and think, how do we change this now? To yeah. Move? Um, and honestly, it wouldn't be incorrect to say that the WASD change had is part partially responsible for the delay of PoE two in some ways. I, I thought because, so because after we because after we changed that, it's like oh geez, you know, like and it's like I almost knew this would even. Happen. It's like as soon as as soon as I was like playing it, I'm like oh man, like there's going to be so many things people are going to want from this, and um, it's like yeah, like. You do something like that, and then now they told me has to change everyone, life. even uh, Zizarin said that WASD is the way to play that game, that and you will uh, never play with a mouse again. Um, but um, so like um, to move, yeah, uh, it, it it it's just changed a huge amount. And the thing is, as we look at each class again, it's like well, like so we we at, at the demo we did in LA, we showed which we didn't show here. Uh, He's like, no one, one was gonna want to play with a mouse. Of it coming out um, uh, from, from the various stream uh, streamers who were there. Um, we, we also showed the fact that when we went back to the warrior again, uh, which is a class we already showed, um, and then we uh, were look like like we're playing around with WSD for melee, we kind of like I played the warrior. Kind of had this like feeling of like oh now that we've got like facing um, uh, direction being a thing, it's a big be able game. To have, uh, Thank to you. Block now because you know you can choose your facing direction. They have active have block like Dark Souls, up, and uh, that will mean that um, you know that, in like, PoE that too. WSD too. So like that's another example of just like. You add this you a real block a class, like, with oh, a man, shield you know, that blocks this, from a direction class, like, oh, man, and when you like, block really things just, your just, stamina just, goes down and when it yeah, it's, gets it's broken kind of, you get stunned of, 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 uh, in poe2 uh, i played so, yeah, that it's a bit crazy it seems like it's a really good option now for you to distinguish and there's passive blocks still too now too both active and passive block ranger where nearly all of its skills can be shot while moving or you have the warrior where nearly everything is a bit more stationary, a bit more explosive in that regard. Have you found that? Well, I don't know that I wouldn't. I would, don't know that I'd say that the warrior is particularly stationary because every skill has movement in it. Sure, but what sure. it does have is the fact that, um, and and all the other thing as well is you don't lose control of your character either, even while you're moving. It's just that you've you're you're more. Uh, it, but it certainly is dangerous when you've got a slower skill, even when it's moving a bit. Like so, that double. Uh, sorry, it's called rolling slam now. Uh, the rolling slams. I use like, that. You have to choose when to use that, and that is definitely a feature of um, the warrior. That um, for the ranger, you don't feel the same. There's way nothing the like that in Poe kind of, like, One. You feel very free to move around all the time. Um, I'll tell you guys and, uh, about it so when like they're that, done. That I'll give you my game. whole experience. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, thank you. Um, the, the, we we always want to have make sure that there's that feeling of like I've still got control of my character. I can still do what I need to do. So even when you've got like the sort of slower attacks on, a, on another class, um, there's still the there's, there's still like a feeling of control, or at least ideally there should be. Um, so uh, yeah, like uh, that that's that, I guess that's sort of ultimately really important to me. You just never feel like you're losing control of your character. How does it, the fact that, like, you'll have these differences in movement... I don't know how old Jonathan is. My build. guess is... Um, he doesn't look that young. Like, boss and monster design. I would guess 45. Like, against yeah, this, he's this, probably this, older this than me. The other big thing is that, like, I tell Mark, yeah. hey, we're adding this Excuse now. And he's like, oh, my God, we have to go through all the monsters again. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like... It was, like, it was, it was dodge roll, and then it's like, oh, no. Like, we have <laughs> yeah. to go through and make sure, like, every monster, every skill everything yeah. we have to go can you be dodge rolled or can you not be dodge rolled right and we have to make that decision and then it's like 
Ah, oh, finally we got through all of them. Oh, and here's active block. I'm like, oh no. Well, so yeah, because we've added now an <laughs> indicator yeah. on attacks that implies they're unblockable. That means yeah. they're unblockable. But also, all the bosses have to make sure that there's the right ratio of blockable to unblockable attacks. Um, you can't so block there's, everything. There's a few things you cannot get wrong. You cannot have the AOE look like one thing and it is actually another thing. Very bad. If you have a telegraph mm. or anything and it looks like it's going to do a 20 radius and it does 30 radius in damage, people will immediately, and even on one boss, people will be like, this game has bad hitboxes and okay. blah, blah, blah. And then the other thing is if you're all of a sudden blah. using active block and a skill that you think should be blockable isn't blockable and we don't like telegraph that properly, again, you'll have the same problem right. where you now don't trust that feature throughout the whole game. So it's like, not only do you have to get it right, you have to be ultra meticulous with it and just be like, you know, this, should this be blockable? Should this not be blockable? You have to ask several people. Like, I never even tried Uber it's in a gray Lilith. area. And generally, if it's in a gray area, you have to say, yes, it is after blockable. After 100 hours. 50% of people will think it is so. And so, yeah, holy, the amount of times you have to go through all those monsters <laughs> and change everything yeah. is not low. But then even with, uh, like, moving while shooting on the Ranger, um, like, because then, once again, you need to make sure the monster composition of each area um, has monsters that can catch up to you and and, yeah. and and hurt you even while you're moving, which is actually a little bit more complicated than initially seems because just just even the smallest amount of movement, like depending on what the monster attack times are, will cause you to not get hit. So then there's like a whole yeah. bunch of tweaking you have to do there as well. There's a lot more monsters that have a kind of step. Or Sounds like they're making well excuses for the game now. being delayed. So when they f run up to you for the first time in order to maintain momentum, the same thing the player does, they leap forward and attack and that get, uh, has the capacity to hit um, a moving target. Um, but even projectiles on bosses, it's like, if you are moving just a tiny bit, like a projectile's gonna miss. Yep. So now you have to think, okay, should it have predictive firing? Yep. Or do we, had, do we just have a, to increase the speed enough? Like we've added tracking <laughs> to way more possibilities. That, like, so the, the tracking has to be thanks, way Thanks, tighter. mute and weapon um, minus so like, and ultimate Gonzo boss, and Stanny We had to and Jim um, upgrade Fye. the tracking to, like, thanks, uh, to target you so that you have to dodge roll um, way, like way towards the end of the attack because then the moment you've got moving while shooting on one class it's like well that means that um, did that I skip a break? Just, was just I shouldn't do that uh, moving a, a, yeah. away okay from those, from I'm gonna get up and stretch so suddenly I'm gonna listen on my phone there. like everyone kind of has this thing but it, like it, it yeah, I'll the be repercussions back. have just been immense um, and uh but I think it is worth it. Oh, it feels it's so cool. much cooler it's and so much, cool, much better yeah. when we get that right. Yeah. Like hundred percent. Yeah. That that was gonna be my response. Like with the hands on, like the boss fights are uh, they feel incredible. And I noticed what you said where you have to like you really have to get good at skilling the dodge because it needs to be right, right before it goes yeah, yeah. off. Not like yeah, yeah. the early dodge, which is like something I'm much more used to doing. And in Path of Exile One, you know, you only get hit when you stop moving. So I right. can see how that was like an yeah, issue yeah. here. Well, we we are certainly getting away from the just run in circles for 99% safety. Um, and I think that is an absolutely amazing thing. You still kind of run in circles just because you do dodge generally in one uh, direction over another. But like, it's not just the like, I am 100% safe while doing orbits around monsters or a boss. Um, yep. There's a lot less of that, which again, makes everything just feel way more engaging and you can't just, I mean, if you want to pause, you don't need to run in circles now. You can just pause and... and <laughs> You know, I take a breather. <laughs> I, I know this is like blown out the beta dates for you and it's been a lot of work, but the net result here should be far, far better. Well, I certainly, I certainly think so. Like, it's just, yeah. It, 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 like, I, I felt really bad about, um, about missing, missing that deadline, but like, yeah, it's just, like at the end of the day, like if, we've found a, if we have found a game that is better than the one that we were making before, then we have to make that game instead of what we were making before, like regardless mm -hmm. of if it pushes the date out. So yeah, like that's ultimately, I think, and like to be fair, it wasn't just that, like there's certainly, like certainly when we came to do Polish, um, and it's interesting actually going back in. So it's been so long since we really polished the start of a game before. Like, and it's weird bringing back all the memories of what we actually did back in the early days of Pee Wee 1 that I'd actually totally forgotten about. Like, all the little details um, about actually doing that again. It's like, it's, it's actually kind of really interesting going back again and doing it. Um, but um, I had forgotten what it takes to get the start of a game to feel good. And, like, it took longer to get Act 1 to a right state than we expected. Um, and um, the, the annoying part about it, um, especially, is that we kind of only really realized this um, as we had kind of, as you know, like, like I would say probably like a, a month and, um, probably a month and a half ago that this wasn't going to happen in time. 
and um, we had already like booked in everything for the event um, that you went to. And then now we were like in this like ultra crunch scramble of like, we have to get this to be good enough for all of these influencers who um, are going to be playing, uh, you know, like the game and recording it and so on uh, and ready, ready, ready for that. And um, I think that even what we delivered there, like even though I think like it was great if you um, like played i guess played in a similar way to what to what we have been or things like that like there were actually some balance holes you could fall into that uh meant you had a really bad time and i do worry that some people kind of fell into those holes and like just didn't end up um having a good time with it because like uh, of that and um so that's kind of like probably the one of the uh more eye-opening things to me is like um there was way more variance in the experience than i was hoping for um and uh you know like some as i said yeah just some people just just like ended up with the the, the like not finding good items like not find like you know or just like the skills they happened to pick the combinations that were like ones that just didn't like work as well as others and things like that and so you know that's that's a bit unfortunate but if you did have the good experience i think that like there were certainly people there who got the experience we wanted to show them and um like uh it, it's, it's really good to see that anyway so hopefully you're one of the people who sort of you know found that you've had some good stuff going on but I, i'm obviously very interested to hear more about your feedback in particular yeah that's the interesting question i kind of have from this is that like there's no doubt this is a very difficult game pop of exile 2 is very challenging but myself and a lot of the other creators i talked to uh really like enjoyed the way that the difficulty was done and especially the boss fights i felt were incredible i really really enjoyed them but it was very easy to see people who didn't have such a good time yeah. <laughs> And so, uh, like, where do you want to try and get this game? Like, so, and how do you balance well, these two things? It, it is very hard, and I think that it's especially hard due to the fact that because the bosses have learnable mechanics, lightning like, <laughs> and shit, poof, uh, like play session on a on another on another. So they were just talking about how some people had a bad so time. That, that means that every single person that picked out, the sorceress people play who haven't played before, hated it. Uh, like played hated games. it. That makes it really really <laughs> Thank hard. Thank you. Um, I picked the warrior so like, and I loved it. Like, I will. <laughs> I thought it was so tight. If the, if the mechanics of the boss gets changed, I will then have to. I will be dying. And like I, I, I think that. Yeah, lots great. of people were getting. Once I'm no longer dying anymore, that Thank necessarily you. mean there aren't still things that other people are gonna uh, have trouble. Like learning or but the or ranger was um, top. I think the worst by one far. is that, um, and I think people ran into uh, here as well, um, is that there's something about I can't think um, straight yet. The item I want them to stop talking, now. and then I'll talk about my it's experience. Leading to too much variance, and uh, we're, we're actually I was discussing with Mark before this um, what's going on there because there, um, there's it's not obvious to me yet even why that is. Um, like the the things like the amount of IPD you can get in a weapon and so like these are basically the same as what they were in POE one. We haven't really changed the mod pool very significantly, um, so like there's not a lot of changes there. And yet the experience that um, people are getting with regard to what whether their items are, are good or not seems like the variance seems to be higher. Um, so I need to like find out what's going on with that and like see if I can address it. But I think that what it might end up being is that we have to try it. Like it, it can be subtle stuff like to do with quest rewards or um, like or like what's going on with the shop and things like that. Um, uh, like like the we they only had tools to three to classes problems, so they, don't they had warrior like, oh, just ranger like, and like, sorceress kind of problem, like it, it really sucks playable is a i think a, a, it's the issue of small sample size right not not in Excuse terms of the number of players but the, in terms of the number of items you're getting like there's a, a scarcity to the items in poe2 which overall felt really good but it does mean that with when there's a like generally a lot yeah, of Yeah, definitely. Of POE2 right, right. is in good hands. So is one. Is one. Rare bow, and the other one yeah. will have a white bow. Can, there's definitely that element. It's, it feels good liking a game that you that. feel like you yeah. trust so the you devs. Use gold to effectively, um, like they're going to make smart like decisions in the end. I don't know how much you engage with the shop in particular. I did, but, yeah. Um, I feel like that's rare. Um, so um, like knowing to go to the shop, because that's the thing, like uh, in POE2, the shops matter a lot more because they actually have good items in them. Like there's like, it's like majority blues and above in the shop um so uh yeah like that 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 sort of helps but um yeah it's like that sort of stuff like yeah i played uh, on pad but then okay so there's one other thing though that i would say is that so um and this is another one which i'm not sure about but it's sort of interesting to me is that when we've been doing our first time user experience testing the feedback has not actually been that the difficulty is too high um and I think that might be partly to do with like an expectation calibration, where it's like, because these people um, in, in those tests have not played POE before, they're yes. not expecting anything one way or the other about how difficult of an experience it is. 
Um, so uh, they, I guess, it's might way be harder like, like, than like, more PoE one. Difficulty actually, which yeah, seems kind of way harder. harder. This is just what it is. This is the yeah, game. Yeah, like the new player is actually like, oh, the difficulty is fine. Like, this is just a difficult game. You know what I mean? It's Whereas, a like, very a difficult game. Here, one player might be like, this is so much harder than Pee Wee One. It is. Um, which is like kind of a weird. Uh, but everyone's a scrub. Before uh, doing this event that we uh, that, 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 that we just did. So, um, yeah, that's I'll kind of explain. interesting. Well. But yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of things there that are going on. But yeah, we, we really have to get that nailed. And it's going to require, um, I think, um, a lot of good alpha testing um, and things like that as well uh, to make sure that everything um, everything there is good. So, it might be a uh, the bosses a are crazy hard. It's something you have to approach with a safety net mindset, where you have like it's like a souls things game. Like you mentioned, having some goals so that the safety net can be items from I, the I shop. Agree. And another so idea that myself and a bunch of the other creators kind of discussed at the event was the idea of like having a slow passive fast charge generation. Will you so at least try WASD just to just to once to see if you like it? Someone ban this loser. Right, right, right. Stay that question there, deserves I mean, I, a ban. I certainly agree that what I don't want to do is a change that will push the top. I'm kidding. Don't ban him, but you yeah. should run for your life for asking that dumb shit. Yeah. Fuck you. If you get, uh, if you get for sure. Off. Like there are, there's well, well, a video for- Ayers, are you going to try racism to see if you like it? The bosses, like, yeah. Still actually just uh -huh. second boss sure, I will. Ban that loser. Like, Fuck to, you. Uh, you know, they're, 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 they're bow Mouse and or, keyboard or, users or are bitches. Whatever, to, like, something, like, with a, with a Dinosaurs. That was very juicy Step and, aside. You know, things like that going on. So the top end is still Pat is the future. To, like, really annihilate shit. Um, but it's that bottom end, like people falling into holes, that I um, yeah. that, that I'm like, concerned about right now. I'm just kidding. Except for uh, that guy being a bitch. problem to approach. Right, right. This with Path of Exile 2, and I'm super interested in seeing how you guys have been evolving it and will continue to evolve it. Something I also noticed about like difficulty was, and it certainly came up at ExileCon, was the issue of stuns, getting stunned by monsters, right. just how brutal. I don't play POE one on um, PC with like a pad because better. trading yeah, sucks. Me getting better. Or I mean, trading's better on console. That's why I play on console. Okay. My PC's fine, and pad support that, works great. The, the thing that stood out to me the most was like getting stunned while mid air using escape shot on the ranger, and I uh, maybe that should one... not be the case. You should there should be iframes in that skill certainly. Okay, um, so, so uh, yeah, I think, maybe I that's think that might... not quite right. We did have a discussion recently where a number of those like jumping skills should effectively be careful with your stupid jokes. Dodge rolling. Yeah, I, I um, just yeah. Need to do I like sharks? Yeah, they're cool. Get a bit I like sharks. sharks. You can just be like, nah, I'm, I'm not going to use a mouse and keyboard. I don't like it. It, it. So we need to figure something out with that just to make sure it's not like, you know. Well, that was, that was my question it. actually was like, these skills, have you considered the idea of them having like, when you are winding up, you can be stunned. And when you're like winding Yeah, down, I play on be console because yeah, of the yeah, auction. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, because of trading. Yeah, um, so trading's like better on console. Like, and I don't like to yeah, sit at a computer. It looked a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it They're talking about PoE like, two mostly, but little like, PoE one right now. Swat me out of the air. <laughs> and I was like, oh, um, yeah. actually you probably want to make it so that like 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 what, when you're one meter in the air, you can still get hit, but as you're above that, then that's when the, the time. When it, oh, it also looks a bit silly. It also looks a bit silly when you get frozen when you're five meters in the air as well. <laughs> uh, so that one. Uh, that one uh, yeah, we need fall damage. damage. Oh yeah, fall damage. Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to push the beta back now because you're gonna des uh, design like a full Z level system. And How big is my screen? Well, like, right now. I don't know. Have we even, shown, we even shown any areas with sub scenes yet? I guess we might not have. <laughs> uh -oh. The same oh, screen I play video games on, but it's a browser with a chat, so the viewing screen of the stream is a little smaller because of the chat. I could see their chat. I, even showed that anywhere, but anyway. I have a part of the screen captured. Um, so it's certainly a shame about My dad got me Sultani kebabs. I had some for lunch, and I'm going to eat some more for dinner. They're good. Extra sumac. Where it's like core game design creep. Right. It's like you guys have discovered things that you want to it's do. It's in the fridge, help yourself. More impressively it's good. The game, right? Really good. Um, but uh, for looking forward to the beta, what sort of, what will the beta end up looking like? Actually, I've been curious about this. Will it be like a full campaign, a partial yep. campaign? Will there be end yep. game? Yep. Your thoughts on that? that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, so basically, yeah. we want the we, so okay. Look, the intention here is that when like, okay, there's no point getting feedback on something. Well, I guess I suppose it's entirely true given what we just did. But if the game isn't um, like, if I don't think it's good, there's no really a lot of point getting feedback from other players. And so like like like, what I what I do, what, what I what I'm saying with that is is that um, we. Uh, 
Okay, what I'm really going for here what is, are like, you saying? is when we release the game, I want it to feel like I think it's a complete game from end to end and that it's a great experience. And then at that point, we get players to try it and see. Like, I think that betering just like one act or something. Betering? Like, the only value that you could have in that is something like a load test or something like that. But I don't think you can actually get like proper... Betering one act. For, for like for the whole game. So to me, you have to have the oh, yeah. whole game. Um, like maybe we don't have to have every single class. But like, I definitely think you have to have at least the, the like, you know, the, the campaign and the end game there. Now, in the beta, what we won't have is like, um, so we'll have an end game <coughs> beta, but it won't include all the end game content that the final right. game will have. But it will have an end game because you need that in order to be able to test the economy properly and so on, right? Like we need to know what happens when people get to max level and like all of that other stuff. Like that has to be there. So um, I want that game to like. Certainly, the beta should feel like here is a full game. Like I could have just, you know, like like. I, I could have just bought this as a new release and that like you know and, and it would feel that good but of course the main thing is, is that we need to be able to um the the, the reason why we'll call it a beta is because we need to be able to <laughs> you're betering right now <laughs> i'd be free with that right because if we couldn't do that then that would kind of defeat the hey man so need to have get out of the, here the, the, the little pervert make balance changes after after that point um, but Batering Act like One right game, now, you know, like this is the game, right? You know, sure, maybe it's missing a couple. Get of this classes, pervert out of here! That is the game with, with everything there you'd expect from a full game to have. Speaking of being That's horny, did you notice like, the titties? He was giving feedback after on the monsters the like, oh, thing in the like, league mechanic. The game because cool titties. Like part of the game, right? The, and this event. is the reason. This is the reason why we wanted to do the LA event and actually get yeah. people um, like myself to really try that. Um, and uh, yeah, like uh, once again, we we got some really interesting information. Yeah, the portrait from that, like looking at that, because yeah, there were there were more holes than I expected. Um, yeah. So uh, there's clearly more work to do there. Um, and um, yeah, the, the, but yeah, we we got to build yeah, characters, yeah. and you got to see stuff that you didn't expect. Like yeah, yeah, for sure. Using sure. in ways you didn't expect and stuff. But... For sure, for sure. <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> You're like, oh, I didn't think anyone would use that skill that way. Well, the like... one that was the most annoying, uh, <laughs> that, that was a total mistake. <laughs> was the crossbow um like there was some balance on the crossbows that was like left in there from when we did the at five demo where like it was just, like and, and then and then that all just kind of like uh fell back all the way to act one and then it, no one people forgot to like actually balance that problem again <laughs> and the reason why is because like we didn't even um uh the crossbows have their own skills built in and the balance of those was not really correctly working with all hmm. the regular um uh, scaling that we do for other weapon types I thought so, so, yeah. um yeah, so someone um, found one of those and then just proceeded to shotgun all the bosses down in like five hits. Um, <laughs> and the fault attack um, the bosses yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, when I saw Cheetah. that, I was like, oh my god, this is like, this is, this was, this was not how this was supposed to go. Um, <laughs> Funny. Um, yeah, so there was a few mistakes like that in there as well. Yeah, yeah, these things happen. <laughs> these things happen. So no I wandering path. It was too good, dude. Everyone seen did it. The real end game for this yet. Uh, what is it gonna look like? What a character build's gonna look like? Yeah, they are talking a lot this time. Right, is this right, something right. you can speak on or show soon? I mean, we we will definitely have to be showing it soon. But I think yep. that um, a lot of it comes down to when you are, when we're finally able to really play through the whole game legit and like you know and get there because you just need to make sure that you're feeling the power progression as you go through the game going up and up. One thing that we haven't really been showing a lot until the Ranger demo just now was actually using um, support gems. Like mm. we just haven't really been showing too much of it. And then the ranger there, we finally showed like a couple there, but that certainly was not like full six links for everything, which is what it's going to be in end game. Um, and uh, it's so weird, just six with, linking like, um, all your the skills. Demo there, when you started to add like multi prog and chain to a couple of things, you start to see the kind of like you know crazy power. You can um, six that, link um, every one of your skills PoE. in Poe two. So I will. It will certainly go even crazier than that. Um, I guess what's harder to say is okay, like I don't want it to be just like the whole screen is covered to the point where you can tell enough, you can see nothing about what is going on. Yeah, um, it is like cool. It's so simple. Like, you know, as soon as you get a skill, uh, it has all these supple, fucking like, holes in it. You can just put the look, support gems into it, even like you nothing. Are, like you know, covering the screen. No like, fusings. No as as jewelers. Nothing. What the hell is actually happening? Um, so uh, yeah, like we want the feeling of power. Like you want that fantasy of like I'm a, I'm becoming a god. Um, but uh, we also am I going to play Rise of the Ronin? So I'm going to play Dragon's like, Dog shit tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, yeah, probably yeah, eventually. Time with a boss, even How about you? Feeling that way, um, yep. and so that is the challenge. Thanks, Ponin Core. To try and hit. 
Yeah, I look forward to seeing how it plays out. Cause yeah, if I have any fear, it's actually that like you lose some of that. I heard Dragon's uh, Dog shit sucks. I heard it doesn't even run well on PC. I heard quests yes. break, so that is the, uh, that is and I heard it's annoying as fuck walking million miles on foot. Want, like, That's what I heard about maps, Dragon's Dog shit. So that you, there are I hope it's good. White monsters, where you're like, I have to do a bit of counterplay against this. Like you know that happened just sometimes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like it, it's always like like just it, it, not all the time, but just sometimes. Thanks to those graphics. Of... It harkens back to like the early days of Path of Exile, where just devourers yeah, it's the same as D one, right? like, basically. Type devourers, from what I hear. And I felt that with like the werewolves in like, like everything about D D one that sucks. Scary, fast. Sucks well, my, again. My my favorite one monster right now in um in, in the demo. Um, you know the eternal. I don't know if you fought against them. Or you remember yeah. the eternal knights? Excuse me. In um mm. uh in, in in the in the mausoleum and tomb, are uh, the ones that have a shield that they're just walking forward with a shield up, and um if you hit them then they um they shoot a projectile back at you. And oh, so you have to find a way. Worked. Yeah, yeah. So you have to find a way to kind of attack them without attacking them from the front because um, they've got 100% block there. So you either attack, attack them with an AOE skill from behind or attack them from above or like use a DGN or something like that. There's like some kind of counterplay there. And um, as soon as I um, fought one of those, because I, I actually had not known that Mark was adding that mechanic. Dude, uh, so the whole PLE2 feels that was, like Dark Souls. As soon as I fought that, I like, messaged him like, man, that Not just the so gameplay. Cool. Just, I, I, really, I don't want to like, really cool to I want to focus on what I'm saying like, later. Like, oh, shit, I have to think because I think No Pants wants to make a YouTube video about me talking about my experience with PLE2. So I don't want to just sprinkle that shit everywhere you, can you know them, you can stun them out of uh, when they're yeah. done talking also, i'll um, focus and i'll tell you guys about the day and then, attack them and then yeah the he'll, he'll have and a my moment experience. in his animation where the shield goes more out like that and then the blocking is disabled right um so I yeah, they have to figure that out yeah. <laughs> but also but, but also if you use lightning arrows you can like aoe them from behind or yeah. um yeah. like you know there's the poison yeah. burst which will poison the guy even though he didn't take damage from the hit and like there's like there's so many ways but it's like kind of interesting to to have stuff like that yeah people uh noted the poison on the live globe is there other like display of these sorts of effects on um, characters i there? do want to do more of those that was added really recently and it was weirdly cool like i didn't expect that change to matter as much as it mattered um, yeah. but it actually really does and having more visibility for the mob density was great effects, everyone agreed so on that i definitely want to do more like i think that um there's definite candidates for shock in poe2 um and stuff like that and, and also the like, bleeding, like being droppings like, were also things. great uh, would be good to have more visibility. like the drops are really good I because there's no more chromatics and no more things, junk so when you drop something it's like so, a good uh, yeah, thing like, we'll definitely like you drop that. like I a don't think we'll alchemy to, uh, orb like it's good UI like wow i got an alchemy have, alchemy orb this is a miracle um, so like yeah just you know just or an alteration or whatever just, yeah, it's, it's really cool thank you but it's not like uh ruthless where there still is a bunch of stuff that you need but none of it's dropping you know and i want to do even better like um i noticed uh like um there's no junk on the floor you know, like I, I think there's more we can do around like feedback for when the you know for when your when your hits not working yeah we, there was like, gold like but that. i didn't like, use it tons much of stuff that we should do better there because all this um, shit was expensive and, uh, yeah it, it's um I, I, it, yeah as i said these little tweaks they matter a lot so it's cool all right it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to both of you thank you very much for your extended time for the q a i know people no are eager to go check out the patch notes and also yeah uh, patch all notes of the content cool. that's someone got shot what'd that you do embargo is up now so uh all right so hopefully people are watching videos and uh um, yeah yeah and seeing see what's going on so we will uh say some see you later guy and talking and so watching, don't talk. thank you very much thanks very much everyone yeah see you later <laughs> see ya all right okay thanks for watching Woo. I guess I could turn this off. Okay. Man, that was long, but dude, the changes to PoE 1 are crazy to me. I guess the two biggest ones are the three Atlas trees and the launch date being the same as PC. What the hell, dude? What is that about? Console launch is the same time as PC. Holy shit. I don't even know what to think. I liked it when console was after because that meant that the PC scrubs could beta test the league for us. But I guess this is cool too. Um, um, oh yeah. Okay, so let me start at the top.